Truman in Ohio would be able to hold on to their seats. Now we look at the real races and find exactly. out what happens in these ones that we have no idea what's going to happen. With. Yeah, but it could be very, very close in some of those key battleground states. And we're going to see what happens. As you point out, the Democrats need a net gain of five. Unless they win the White House, then they need a net gain of four. We have a key race alert right now. All right, I'll show you what's going on in Florida right now. Uh, 29 electoral votes are at stake. 91% of the vote is in, and Donald Trump is building up uh, a sort of impressive lead. 63,297 uh, votes. Donald Trump has a lead over Hillary Clinton in, in Florida with 91% of the vote in, 48.8% to 48.1%. 56% of the vote in North Carolina is in. Hillary Clinton has an impressive lead of 131,000 over Donald 30, Trump. 15 electoral over votes Donald Trump. at stake in in Ohio, 31% of the vote is, is in. Hillary Clinton has a lead of almost 100,000 votes over Donald Trump in Ohio. 18 electoral votes at stake in Ohio right now. We've got more. Uh, in Virginia, 45%, almost half of the vote is in. Donald Trump has an impressive lead over Hillary Clinton in Virginia. 130,000 vote lead, in fact, over Hillary Clinton. 13 electoral votes are at stake in Virginia. More numbers coming in, more results coming in. 9% of the vote in Georgia is in. Donald Trump has an impressive lead of 169,000 plus over Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire. Only 7% of the vote is in, but Hillary Clinton's lead is 5,700 over Donald Trump, 53% to 41.8%. Michigan, they're going to be closing the polls, but we've got some numbers so far. Hillary Clinton has a 20,000 vote lead over Donald Trump. 6% of the vote is in in Michigan. And in Texas, they'll be closing the polls soon, but 46% of the vote has been released. Hillary Clinton, look at this, has a, a 56,000 vote lead over Donald Trump with almost half of the vote in in Texas right now. There you see right now. We have more projections to make right now. Two more wins for Donald Trump. CNN projects Donald Trump will win the state of South Carolina with its nine electoral votes. Another win for Donald Trump in South Carolina. Donald Trump will also win Alabama with its nine electoral votes. Donald Trump the winner in Alabama and South Carolina. Two uh, important wins for Donald Trump. We have a key race alert right now. The polls in Arkansas have just closed. Too early to call in the state of Arkansas. Bill Clinton's home state, Hillary Clinton, was the first lady of Arkansas. Too early to call in Arkansas. Six electoral votes right now. Let's take a look at the electoral college map. See where it stands right now with these latest wins. Look how close it is. 68 electoral votes for Hillary Clinton. 66 for Donald Trump. You need 270 to win the White House. Let me remind you, the red states we've projected, Donald Trump will win. The blue states we've projected, Hillary Clinton will win. The yellow states, too early to call. No projection yet in those states. Uh, Jake, uh, this is a nail-biter in several of these states. It's been going back and forth, up and down. In Florida, especially uh, Donald Trump with something like a 60,000 vote lead right now. Uh, but there are still lots of outstanding votes in Broward County uh, and in Palm Beach County, the southeastern part uh, of Florida. Uh, where there are a lot of Democratic votes. And still, it's, it's um, as we always said, this was going to be a very tight race in some of these states. And in Florida, really, I have no idea what's going to happen. Republicans and Democrats still anticipate Hillary Clinton could edge it out. But at the end of the day, who knows? Uh, and and Dana, Donald Trump really needs to win Florida if he's going to have a major shot. He could do it in other ways, but Florida is so important. That's right. Look, it's important for him just emotionally and symbolically because he feels that it is a second home because of Mar-a-Lago and other uh, places that he that he has there. But also, much more importantly, mathematically, it is very, very hard for him to get the keys to the White House without going through Florida first. And as you said, the counties that are out do seem to be more Democratic than the ones that we already have in that chose Donald Trump uh, slightly ahead. But I have to say, it was just... Uh, communicating with some Republicans saying, well, you can't say we didn't get our vote out right? because <laughs> it certainly looks like they did. Yeah, uh, although uh, uh, we should point out... Uh
worse because this right. is an area where there's been significantly, I mean, uh, to, to, for Trump to do worse, I'm sorry, in order to do better, this has been an area of a large amount of the middle class of Puerto Rico has fled to central Florida and is now living in Orange County, waiting for the economy back home to get better, and they've registered to vote. And Democrats say in Orange and the surrounding counties, Orlando and the surrounding area, this is where the Puerto Ricans are registering as, and Central Americans registering as independents, not Democrats. Mm -hmm. Stand by, I want to get to Dana, but first I want to go over to Bill Hammer at the billboard so we can drill down a little bit deeper into what we're seeing in these uh, I think it's counties. fascinating what we're seeing these developments here, and just some of what Carl was talking about there, and you look at the total vote number, this, this is the the, the panhandle that you guys were just discussing here so we'll keep an eye on that it's, it's almost like you know you've got a weight up here and a counterweight down here and i was just ticking through this i4 corridor let me go back in here for a moment here uh this is you know tampa to the west it's orlando in the middle it's daytona beach up to the north and let's clear that off here this is hillsborough county okay um so she's got about a six but look look at the percentage uh, on this at six percent you know, four years ago, Obama was at 53%. Okay, so you examine that and you store that data point away. Then you come up the I-4 quarter. This is Orlando, Orange County. At the moment, she's at 60% to his 35%, which is a pretty decent number, outperforming a little bit percentage-wise from Obama four years ago. This is um, Seminole County, largely Republican. Mitt Romney had 76% of the vote in that county alone four years ago. So how's Trump doing on the margins right now? He's... He's a little bit below that, about 73%. Um, the Trump team had talked a lot about Daytona Beach for some time leading up. This is one of two counties that Romney flipped four years ago. And so in Volusia County, Daytona Beach, Trump is right about 55% comparison to four years ago. So he's well outperforming the margin there. Uh, up here in Flagler, uh, another county that Romney flipped four years ago, it was 53.7. And at the moment, it's, it's 59%. So now you start to look at the raw numbers, Carl, and you look at perhaps 35,000 votes in this county, perhaps 20,000 in another, and it's, it's, as they say, it's real money after a while, and that's what you're starting to see just a little bit. This is Palm Beach down here, Trump has Mar-a-Lago. Uh, she's just under 58%, and Obama last year was right about that number, 58.6% compared to Romney. So it's, you can fish and feel and find a lot of what adds up to a, just a super tight race uh, between Clinton and, and Trump, 4.2 to 4.1. Uh, four years ago, the raw numbers were, you know, this is 75,000 votes four years ago in a state where you had 8.5 million cast. I think, Carl, we were talking over the weekend that you typically would get, you typically get, what, about a 20 to 25 percent increase? Well, that and was, new votes over a four-year period? Well, that, that, that's that apply what, to this. Well, that's not <coughs> what happened between 2000 and 2004 was a 25 percent increase. This was, this was expected to be a year in which there's not going to be a dramatic increase. And we are having a significant increase in a lot of states. because Donald Trump is ahead. Uh, just, just a cautionary note. Again, this is more competitive than we thought Virginia was going to be, at least than a lot of people thought Virginia was going to be. So here's the big issue. Donald Trump is doing exactly what he needs to do out here. These are your smaller rural areas. You pick on these counties, 60%, 69%. Seventy-nine percent. Donald Trump's doing exactly what he needs to do out in rural. But the problem for the, the issue is what's here. Only fifty percent in Loudoun County. Secretary Clinton running it up. This is where your population center is coming closer to Washington D.C. Only twenty-seven percent of the vote counted in Fairfax County. Again, look at the margin there. Go into Fairfax City and pull that out. Only forty-three percent of the vote counted there. That's a very low number there. So we're waiting for a lot more votes out of Fairfax. Want to move over here? You come down here to some of these swing counties that you look at. Hillary Clinton, this is this is a comeback for Donald Trump. When we looked earlier tonight, and we're only at 16% in Prince William County, uh, he was way down in Prince William County when we were in the single digits. This is a comeback of sorts there to show this will be the challenge. If Donald Trump can stay that competitive in these outer suburbs, then he has a chance. If you get into places just across the bridge in Arlington, Virginia, where you, you know, find the Pentagon, 
this is what you expect, two-thirds of the vote. So there's more votes for Hillary Clinton to come out of here. The question is, can Donald Trump stay more competitive in the outer suburbs and then run it up in these rural areas? But again, let's just check down here in the Norfolk area to see what we have here. Chesapeake County, 61 percent there. Fort Smith here, 41 percent. In these Democratic areas down here, we'll still some votes to be counted. So Donald Trump is ahead. Uh, that's encouraging. Uh, but we still got some business to do in Virginia. North Carolina, Hillary Clinton is ahead in North Carolina right now. She's ahead, what, by uh, about 80,000 votes, uh, 80, more than 80,000 votes. 80, 85,000 votes. 85,000 votes. And they are coming out of the big areas where she needed to get them. Mecklenburg County, just shy of 10 percent of the state population. That's a big margin. And we still have more votes to get here. Again, when you go into these states now, statewide, where are we? 59 percent. And so we still know, because we have a zero there, that means this is an early vote dump and we're waiting for more votes to come in. We still have more to get out of Mecklenburg County. Then you move over here, Wake County, again, used to be the back and forth swing county in the state. It's a Democratic county now, but the Democrats need to win it big. She's winning it big. That's about 100,000 votes. That's what she needs to do. In the, and here, again, and this is where we're waiting, because the polls weren't kept open. They should be closing now in that area, Durham County, right in this ballpark. So again, you look at this, and the question is, where does Donald Trump get, where can he get his votes in these places where he's winning? Let's just look, Brunswick County. Again, it's a small area, but you want to compare it. He's running even with where Governor Romney ran. Romney was at 60 percent here. Donald Trump's just shy of that. So it, you, as you watch this pull out, it tells you the performance-wise, and we're seeing this in a lot of states, performance-wise in this race, it looks a lot like 2012. Now, Obviously, President Obama won in 2012. In this state, Mitt Romney won. Uh, and so we're going to watch this. We still have, you see the light, the, the gray. Those are mostly Trump votes. You can be sh pretty sure that in these rural areas, this one, you know, between two Democratic counties here, Democrat might win this one. But if you come through and you look back in time, most of these rural areas, tend, up here, they're Democratic. Down here and out to the west, they tend to be Republican. So if you look at <laughs> right now, a little bit more probably to be gained for Secretary Clinton up here. Trump has to run it up here. And then the population centers, we haven't looked at Winston-Salem all night. Again, we have a zero. This means this is early votes to come in. So if you're the Clinton campaign, you're looking at the map, you still have some, you know, in these population centers. You know that 59 percent of in. the vote is in, so there's still right. lots of votes out there. Let's go to Ohio right now. Hillary Clinton is ahead in Ohio. No Republican has ever won the White House without Ohio. Right. And a quick footnote again as we go through this, if you're just joining us. These are states we're still counting the votes in. This one here, I just want to show you. We don't think Hillary Clinton's going to win Mississippi tonight. Uh, if she does, that would be a stunner. But these are live data feeds. So it's one or two precincts, one or two counties coming in. So bear with us as we go through the night. You wanted to go to Ohio right there, 49 to 46. Uh, again, if you're the Clinton campaign, you're encouraged. Uh, the map is filling in. I'm just going to show you. This is Third of the vote is in. Right. So look at the map. Remember, it's mostly red. Remember where the blues are? It's pretty typical. A little more red up here for Donald Trump so far up here. If you look up along... The she's ahead state. now by 50,000. But she's ahead by 50,000 votes. And so the question is, this is your biggest vote center, Cuyahoga County, where Cleveland is. 32% uh, of the vote. She's running it up pretty big. It's a reasonable expectation. There's more in the bank here for Secretary Clinton. So then you want to pull out and you say, here's the issue. It's a lot of red, right? They're smaller. But they're only, it's only 24% of the vote. Only 17% of the vote. Only 18% of the vote. 60% of the vote here, but still some more votes to come in to Trump. So Trump is winning all this red, and if you're Donald Trump, be patient. Republicans should not give up on Ohio. There's a lot of places here that have not counted the votes. And again, you're talking, it's not as big a margin, but if it's 2,000 here, you know, 2,000 here, 1,000 or so here, over time you can make it up. So there's still a lot to be counted in Ohio. We have, we're, up to, we're up to a third of the vote, but if you look at the Republican areas, are you getting to 100%? Then if you're the Trump campaign, you'd start to get worried. We have a lot of counties still in Ohio. She's ahead at the moment, but there's a lot of business to be done. As you see, most of these counties are still in the 20s or the 30 percent wise. Let's we go get back to North talking. Carolina because Hillary Clinton's lead in North Carolina, a critically important state, uh, has just narrowed uh, what to about 66, 66,000 votes with 61 percent of the vote in. 66,000 votes. And so you're seeing what's happening. I just want to go out here to the Democratic area where she's getting 57 percent. You start to watch and see where Donald Trump is starting to pull in. He's got votes to be counted out here, too. 33% of the vote here. He's pulling He's pulling pretty healthy margins in the smaller rural areas, and there's still votes to be counted. So as these counties come in, he's coming back. I just want to keep checking here because it's the, the big population says to see if it's getting any closer. We're still waiting for more votes out of Mecklenburg County. And the question is, you have the early vote that comes in. The Democrats, in a lot of places, the Democrats feel very happy with their early vote turnout. Sometimes the, when you get the day of voting, you know, the Republicans will stage it. Even in a Democratic area, the Republicans will get closer because of the traditionalists who turn out on Election Day. So we need to be careful when we look at these big places where we still have votes to be counted. But here in Wake County, we're now up to 88 percent. 
And so this is to the same point in a very competitive state. The Clinton campaign can count on some more out of Wake County, but they're starting to, this is where you run your models. You've got 12% left. Is it enough to offset elsewhere? Uh, Durham County's now up to 12%. This is an area where she needs that. They see the 85%, yeah. not only the 85%, but the gap, 22,000 votes right there. In, in, your, in your computer models of this race, you need 85% and big turnout in Durham. All right. Let's just pull out Stand by. for a second. Very close. We're going to be here a while. All right, we got another check of the electoral vo vote count of the Empire State Building right now. Hillary Clinton now with 68 electoral votes of the 270 needed to win. Donald Trump not far behind with 66 electoral votes. We're just minutes away from another big round of poll closings in 14 states, including delegate-rich New York State. It's a close race to 270 electoral votes right now. You can see our running tally on the uh, Empire State Building. Hillary Clinton uh, now with uh, 68 electoral votes. Donald Trump with 66. And just on the street from, from the world-famous landmark, New Yorkers are watching election results on CNN as we get ready for the polls to close in New York State. That's the home turf for both Clinton and Trump. We're getting uh, new numbers coming in right now. Here's a key race alert. All right, Donald Trump is ahead in two important states in Florida and Virginia. In Florida right now, 91% of the vote has been counted. Donald Trump has a 110,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton, 49.1% uh, to 47.8%. 29 electoral votes are at stake in Florida. In Virginia, almost 60% of the vote is now in. Uh, Donald Trump is ahead by 128,000 votes over Hillary Clinton, 50% to 44.8%, 13 electoral votes in Virginia. 
two important battleground states where Hillary Clinton is ahead. In Ohio, in Ohio, more than a third of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a lead of 36,500 votes over Donald Trump, 49% to 47.2%, 18 electoral votes in Ohio. And in North Carolina, 61% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton's lead is 62,000 over Donald Trump. 15 electoral votes at stake in North Carolina. So she's at North Carolina and Ohio right now. Let's go over to Jake and Dana. We're watching Florida. Right now, let's say Florida, Florida, Florida. More than 90 percent, Jake, of the vote is now. And uh, it's surprising how close it is, given the fact that uh, both Democrats and Republicans uh, in the state had thought that Hillary Clinton had a, quite, a slight edge. We're still waiting for a lot of outstanding vote in southeastern Florida, which is a Democratic scramble stronghold. Uh, but he's got more than 100,000 votes as of right now with 91 percent of the vote in. Yeah, that's an impressive, uh, impressive lead, but it's, it, it could certainly come back depending on what happens in those heavily Democratic counties in the southeast. That's right. And look, they not only spent money, but they also sent their most prized resources, the candidates themselves, over and over again. Just really quickly, our, our embeds with either candidate, Ashley Pillow and Dan Merica, says both of them, since the conventions, both of them have been there to Florida 25 times, holding 45 events in one state. And that tells you everything you need to know about why this is so close. Yeah, Anderson, this night is turning out to be a real nail-biter. It is. Fascinating. It's going to be a long night uh, indeed. Let's talk with the Gloria Borger, David Axelrod. I mean, as you look at Florida, uh, Donald Trump has a lead of some 100,000 votes, votes. But again, we're talking about Miami, uh, Dade County votes still to come in, Broward uh, and Palm Beach. There are, there are about 800,000. I was just uh, speaking with a Republican in the state. 800,000, a million votes still out. Uh, they believe this Republican says... Uh, that uh, her Democratic buddies are very worried uh, about this state right now. And I, I look, I think that you see the Latino turnout in the state was 18 uh, percent. Barack Obama's, uh, David pointed out to me, uh, was 17 percent. So it's a little bit up, but it's not usually up, which is what we anticipated. African-American vote is up in the, yeah, in the state. 18%. So that may, that may uh, balance it out. David Axrod, as you look at the numbers, what do you say? But it's a slightly less, uh, it is a slightly more minority right. turnout. And I, I think when you look at what's out, I think there's cause for optimism. What, what, in terms of out, what votes have not been counted not in, in those that heavily leaning Democratic areas. And as John King uh, points out, that is how you have to look at these. There are some big pockets of support for her that are out. This is going to be close. Uh, assuming the votes close. that have not been counted in those leaning Democratic areas continue to mirror the votes that have been counted in those same areas. Then she would end up uh, winning the state. But, uh, you know, so if I were sitting there and looking at this, I would say, let's count them because if you're on the Democratic side, this thing could turn out. But, I mean, all along the Trump convention has been saying that Florida's must win for them. Absolutely. And, and I mean, it, they it, can't it, win without it. I mean, the fact of the matter is that's 29 electoral votes. They have to have it. And they have to have other states as well that they've, uh, they've not been leading it in the polls. But this one, because of the size of it, uh, they have to have. So this is really, this, this is going to tell a lot of the story of this uh, race. And, and I was uh, texting the Democrat in the, in the state who was saying that uh, Donald Trump did better in the exurbs, rural rural areas. And what this points to is this divide in this country. Yeah. You know, urban, rural. And you see it in the state of Florida. You certainly do, Wolf. We're standing by for the second largest wave of poll closings in the battle between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump just minutes from now at 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll be watching 14 states, including key races in the battlegrounds of Arizona, Colorado, Wisconsin, and Michigan. The last polls are also closing in Kansas, Louisiana, Minnesota, Nebraska, New Mexico, New York, North Dakota, South Dakota, Texas, and Wyoming. 156 electoral votes are at stake in this coming hour. Remember, 270 are needed to win the presidency. Uh, Jake, uh, we're heading into battlegrounds where the candidates have tried to clearly shake up the electoral map. That's right. As we move west, uh, we're looking at some states now uh, where uh, they have been trying to change the color of, of states. We've seen Hillary Clinton try to make a play to turn Arizona from red to blue, while Donald Trump would like to flip Democratic leading Michigan or Wisconsin or Colorado from blue to red. Let's check in with our correspondents who are at the major presidential candidates' campaign headquarters. They're both in New York City. 
First, let's go to Jeff Zeleny at Clinton Campaign Headquarters. And Jeff, these numbers out of North Carolina and Florida have got to be nerve-wracking for the Clinton team, especially Florida, which they felt pretty confident about. They did indeed, Jake. Really, for the last couple of days, the Clinton campaign confidence has been rising uh, about Florida. And but it, what we're seeing here is seeing campaign strategy play out in real life. Keep an eye on Broward County, as John and you and everyone has been saying. Secretary Clinton visited there three times in the last week alone. They were literally dragging people to early vote. So that is something that is still out. That's why one top advisor tells me just a few moments ago there is no panic because of Broward County. But I can tell you, Jake, much closer than they thought. They're also watching Pennsylvania very carefully. But one advisor tells me we're flying almost blind there. This is old school. No early voting. They're frankly not sure what's happening in Philadelphia as much. But first things first, and first for the Clinton campaign, is watching Broward County and watching South Florida. Jake. All right, let's go to Sarah Murray, who's with the Trump campaign uh, just a few blocks away in Manhattan. And Sarah, uh, the Trump campaign, while uh, who knows what's going to happen, they've got to feel pretty good. They've, they're really turning some of these states uh, into a very competitive battlegrounds. They do feel very good about that, Jake, and particularly when you look at Florida and how tight the race is there, they're pleased uh, to see that. But this is not a campaign that's out there popping champagne or rejoicing about the numbers they're seeing. They expected Florida to be very tight and very nerve-wracking, and they are very aware of the fact that if they cannot pull out a victory in Florida, then basically Donald Trump's chances of reaching 270 pretty much evaporate. And so that's why when I was checking in with one uh, Trump staffer about how they're feeling so far about Florida, this person just told me simply scared. All right, Sarah Murray at Trump campaign headquarters. Let's go to Wolf Blitzer right now. It's a lot closer, Dana, than so many people fought in these key battleground states. Uh, this is going to take a while. It is going to be a long night. Look, I mean, it is a divided country, and at least as, as far as the votes are showing us as they're coming in now, that is playing out. I mean, there's no question about it, and especially and incredibly so in the purple state of Florida. Let's walk over to John King and take a closer look at Florida right now. John, uh, some of those Democratic-leading counties in the southeastern part of Florida, there's still a lot of votes outstanding. Still a lot of votes outstanding. The question is, are there enough votes outstanding? So you go through them as you look, and you look at Palm Beach County. We've been stuck at 53% of the vote counted for quite some time, uh, 57 to 40. So reasonable to assume there are a lot more votes here for Secretary Clinton. If the margin holds up, it doesn't always. could be some you know, more Republican-leaning precincts out there. We don't know exactly what's out there, but if you watch as it's built, it's been pretty consistent. The question is, what's left? Jeff Zeleny was just talking about this. We're only up to 13% in Broward County. Secretary Clinton has targeted this quite a bit. He's at 60, 60, 70, 30 almost right there. Let's just go back and look at it comparative in time, 67, 32. So at the moment, she's running a little stronger than President Obama was four years ago when he eked out the narrowest of victories in this one county in Florida. The president won statewide narrowly. We come down to Miami-Dade, which is the biggest place for Democratic votes, and this one's almost counted, 91%. But again, that 9%, when you're talking about, look at the numbers of votes here, that 9%, a decent amount of votes. So we've got some more counting to do here. And just, the other thing you start looking for, Wolf, is where are the Republican votes still out? So you're looking, DeSoto County, 100%. A lot of these smaller counties, the rural counties where Donald Trump runs it up, still Polk County, we have nothing. So there's some potential gain for Donald Trump here. But you're starting to go through these. If you come out to the coast, uh, here's a place, Volusia County, this is Daytona uh, area. Uh, he's out, this is a place where Donald Trump outperformed Mitt Romney. You look 54, 55, there to 50. So there are some places where Trump is outperforming Romney, and this is a decent vote total. 40, just shy of 40,000 votes there. Uh, he's running up the votes here. He's done very well along the northern, northeastern coast of Florida, Donald Trump has. But again, you find a county, you see a big gap, but it's at 100% when you're trying to make up votes. You move up here, a big gap, but it's at 100%. So you pull back out where the Democratic votes are, counted here in Orange County. Mostly counted here. One of the interesting areas, this is very, very close, and it's going to be very close to the end. If Donald Trump ekes out a victory, he may have his performance right here in the Saint, Tampa St. Pete area. Why do I say that? Let me pull it out and look at it. Let's take the lines away so it's not confusing. Hillsborough County, 51-45. Go back in time. President Obama won it a little bit bigger. You move over here to Pinellas County. You see that's the president's margin four years ago, five points. Uh, Donald Trump is leading here right now. It's a vote-rich area in the western part of the state, a swing area that goes back and forth in close races. Trump is outperforming Romney in that particular part of the state. So that's what's keeping him more competitive, keeping him in the lead right now. If he ekes out a narrow victory, he'll have his performance up here to think about it. And again, we're going to just come back down here and keep checking. Still at 53%. A lot of votes here still to come in. And so far, they've been going Clinton's way. 
This is the one now up to 16%. We'll check her lead in just a second as this post comes in. But you want to watch as we start going from 13 to 16 to 20 to 30. Does it stay 69-30? You know, does it stay in that margin? If it stays in that margin, she's going to make up a that lot of That Broward votes. County where Fort Lauderdale is 9.3% right. of the whole population right. of the state. And so as you move up, if you're looking at that big of a population center. As you move up through the count, Miami-Dade's still stuck at 93, but this is the big one we're waiting on. I mean, there, there'll be some adjustments in the margins, but when we get more of this, when we get from 16 to 30 to 40, we'll see if this holds up, and we'll see that we'll get to a better sense of the turnout. We'll see how much of the math, but if you look at, just just imagine, at 16%, you're talking about, you know, 260, 280,000 votes right there. Uh, if, if that continues, there are still votes to be had, but we've got some counting to do. I'm just looking at other places as we go through this. 76% here, Clinton with a big lead, so maybe some more votes for her there. Most of these other places. Let's do Virginia for a quickly. moment. Look, quickly, Virginia. Let's pull back out to the map. Again, these are states where the early votes are being counted. These are not states that have been tossed. But Virginia has stayed. Donald Trump lead for quite some time, and we're up to 65%. Now, this is a state, remember, Hillary Clinton's running mate, Senator Tim Kaine, former Governor Tim Kaine, is from here. You see the lead right here, 50% to 45%. And that's a pretty healthy lead for Donald Trump, so let's take a look. Number one, he's doing what he needs to do, running it up out of the small rural counties. And this is incredibly important in these states, 74, 21. You see how this goes here. The big issue, Wolf, we're still waiting for some votes out of the Washington, D.C. suburbs. See, only half of the votes here counted in less than half in Fairfax County, 50% in Loudoun County. So Donald Trump leads in Virginia, Wolf, but still a lot of math to be done in the more populated areas just outside of Washington, D.C. 14 states are about to close uh, the uh, polling, polling in 14 states, including two huge ones, Texas and uh, New York. Uh, we're watching several other states right now. We're getting ready to make some projections. All right, take a look at this. Uh, we project that Hillary Clinton will carry her home state of New York. That's 29 electoral votes. Hillary Clinton will win New York State. That's Donald Trump's home state as well. Hillary Clinton carries the Empire State. Uh, Donald Trump, we project, will win Kansas with its six electoral votes, Nebraska with its five electoral votes, and Wyoming with its three electoral <laughs> votes. Donald Trump wins those three. Donald Trump wins some more states. Three more. He will carry North Dakota. Uh, with its three electoral votes, and South Dakota uh, with its three electoral votes. Donald Trump carries those states as well. Donald Trump uh, carrying some more states. Let's take a look uh, at the uh, states where it's too early to call right now. Uh, these are the states uh, where the polls have closed, but we're not able to make any projections. Arizona, Colorado, Louisiana, Michigan, Minnesota, New Mexico, Texas, and Wisconsin. No, uh, no uh, projections yet. Here's the electoral map as it stands right now. Uh, Hillary Clinton has 97 electoral votes. Donald Trump has 84 electoral votes. Remember, 270, that's the magic number you need to be elected president of the United States. You see the map over there. The blue states are the states that Hillary Clinton has won. The red states are the states that Donald Trump has won. All those yellow states, all those yellow states are states where the <laughs> polls have closed, but we're not yet able to make, not yet able to make a projection. By the way, Nebraska, uh, we are projecting that Donald Trump will win three of the five electoral votes in Nebraska. Nebraska, one of two states with Maine, where they distribute electoral votes according to congressional districts. So let's go over to Jake. Uh, this is a this is a big win for uh, Hillary Clinton in New York because Donald Trump, that's his home state. You know, originally he thought he, he would have a shot, not necessarily in Manhattan, but in upstate New York. Yeah, bragging rights at the very least. It's a democratic state. Uh, let's uh, show some images there of the Empire State Building. If you uh, if you're watching right now um, and you and you sent a photograph of yourself voting uh, with the hashtag my vote to Instagram, uh, your images will be making up the the <laughs> mosaic on the Empire State Building. <laughs> Uh, as uh, New Yorkers, Democrats, uh, celebrate the win of Hillary Clinton of that state, the Empire State. But still, this is just the beginning of a very, what looks like it's going to be a very long night. Yeah, uh, let's, get, let's get back uh, to the electoral map right now. Take a look over here. You see uh, the electoral map, the projected projected uh, numbers that we have. 97 electoral votes for Hillary Clinton, 84 right now for Donald Trump. Uh, 100, uh, 270 needed to be elected president of the United States. But Florida, that's the big story right now. It, it is so razor thin. Uh, you know, I'm d texting back and forth with both Democrats and Republicans. Frankly, both are surprised at how at how tight it is and, and how uh, the Latino vote, at least it looks at this point, certainly it's higher than it was in 2012 and 2008. 
but not the surge in that particular state that many suspected would come. And at least right now, there are counties uh, where Donald Trump is outperforming every Republican that has run in Florida uh, for president uh, in 16 years. Uh, he's doing very, very well. He's up Republican turnout and re the Republican vote in some of these right-leaning counties. Yep. And, and it, look, this is the story that Donald Trump and his team said that we would be telling in, in many of these places, that there are people who have been disaffected for many, many years who see uh, a candidate, their candidate, finally, in Donald Trump, that they would come out and vote where they hadn't done so before. And that explains the story of these red-leaning uh, counties where the vote is very high. We have another key race alert right now. All right, let's take a look. Let's start in Florida right now. Donald Trump is ahead impressively with 91% of the vote now in. Look at this. He has a lead of 143,361. That's an impressive lead right now with so, much, so many of the votes already counted. In Ohio, Donald Trump also has a lead of more than 52,000 with 39% of the vote in. 18 electoral votes in Ohio. Donald Trump ahead there. In Virginia right now, Donald Trump still has an impressive lead in Virginia. 66% of the vote is in. Donald Trump is ahead by more than 108,000 votes in Virginia. 13 electoral votes at stake in Georgia. 29% of the vote is in. Donald Trump has a very impressive lead of more than 340,000 over Hillary Clinton. 62.5% to 35%. There are 16 electoral votes in Georgia. An impressive lead for Donald Trump in Georgia right now. Let's go on to North Carolina right now. 69% of the vote is in. Look at how close it is. Donald Trump has a lead, but of only 689 votes. He just took the lead over Hillary Clinton in North Carolina. Now his lead has grown a little bit as we're speaking. His lead is almost 3,000 votes over Hillary Clinton, 48.8% to 48.7%. 69% of the vote is now in in North Carolina. Donald Trump has a slight lead. In New Hampshire, only 13% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a small uh, advantage right now, 4,500 over Donald Trump. Four electoral votes in New Hampshire. This has been a battleground state. In Michigan, 11% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton's lead is only 13,771, 48.7% to 46.2%. Michigan has a lot of electoral votes, 16 to be specific. Michigan, it's a close race in Michigan right now. Uh, it's a key state to Pennsylvania. Only 5% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has an impressive lead of more than 106,000 votes over Donald Trump, 65% to 30%. 20 electoral votes are at stake in Pennsylvania. Donald Trump really was hoping for Pennsylvania, but only 5% of the vote is in. Let's take a look at Colorado right now. 7% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a 42,000 plus vote lead over Donald Trump. But very early, only 7% of the vote is in. Nine electoral votes are at stake in Colorado right now. Uh, the uh, Let's take a look at the Electoral College map, where it stands right now. You can see uh, Hillary Clinton has 97 electoral votes. Donald Trump has 84 electoral votes. Once again, you need... 270 to be elected president of the United States. The red states, we've projected going to Donald Trump. The blue states, uh, we've projected going to Hillary Clinton. All those yellow states you see, too early to call, no projections there. Let's go over to John King. I want to update our viewers on Florida right now because that vote is coming in in Florida. Donald Trump uh, building up an impressive lead. He is building up an impressive lead. The question is, is there enough still out there for Hillary Clinton? And when you go through some of these other counties, Donald Trump running it up in the rural areas, only 57% of the vote counted here in Marion County. It's not insignificant, just shy of 2% of the state population. So, again, there's more votes here for Donald Trump. And you're looking around trying to find out where they are, the 100% there and the 100% there. And so the question is, as Trump runs it up in the conservative rural parts of the state, is there enough when you get to 49 point to 47, you know, you see the vote count there. She needs to make it up. Is it there? Potentially. Potentially. Palm Beach here, 83% of the vote in. That lead there. She gets some vote here. This is the big question mark. Let me pull this back up for you here. The big question mark remains Broward County. Are there enough Democratic votes left? We have it at 16%. We're waiting for an update. That's been held solid there for some time. So sometimes you get a vote dump. The percentage total jumps up pretty quickly. Is there enough there? That's really the biggest outstanding question is how much of a boost will Hillary Clinton get out of Broward County and is it enough to overcome that Donald Trump lead? Because most of Miami-Dade is in, again, 7% left in a big populated county like Miami-Dade. There's more there too. The question is, when you pull it out to statewide, is it enough? What's left down here? Because most of the other Democratic centers are in. You see 100% of the vote counted there. 
You see 92% of the vote counted there. Again, Donald Trump, she's winning Hillsborough County, Tampa. Donald Trump outperforming Mitt Romney here, keeping it closer. Donald Trump winning in Ellis County, where St. Pete is. President Obama won this county four years ago. Uh, so you see some strength for Donald Trump in this part of the state uh, that is giving him an advantage as we head into the final count. Now, we've been at this before in past elections where getting from 92 to 99 sometimes takes a very long time. Uh, so we'll see if the votes are still out here. One other thing, Wolf, since last time you were here, the last time you were here, Ohio was Before blue. we get to, before we go back to Florida for a second. Sure. Because I know we have, a, we have a feature where there's still outstanding votes uh, uh, remaining. We see 92% of the vote is in. You bring Can you up. isolate the areas where there are still votes uh, 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 outstanding? So you do this here, and you see this is this tells you where you have so a lot of votes still to come in. This is where uh, where I put it. You just watch the number right there, where we are below. So let's say we're we're below 75 percent of the vote counted, right? You leave that right there. So you see the areas where you are still waiting, right? So we're obviously this is the biggest vote center, but everywhere else where we're waiting. Because he's ahead right now by about 130,000 votes, uh, 142,000 exactly right now. Are there enough votes outstanding that could for Hillary Clinton to overcome that Donald Trump advantage? So let's look at it two ways, just based on this. These are places where you're under you're under 75 percent. So these are this these are Republican places here. You bring it out here, 57 percent of the vote counted again. It's 1.8 percent of the state population, but that's to be gained for Donald Trump. It's not as big as we're about to go, but again, that's that's a lot of votes there still for Donald Trump if he keeps those margins. No guarantee, but these places have a vote history, and these are Republican places. This is tiny, pretty small, but again, you're only at 50 percent here, right? So imagine that if, if 9,000, just shy of 9,000 votes there, if the other 50% comes in the same way, it adds roughly ballpark 9,000 more votes. So there's your advantage for Donald Trump. The only place for the Democrats, a big Democratic area that's under 75. I'm going to move the dial. No, for it just went up to almost half. Just up to almost half here. And so the question is, because it's up to almost half, let me just pull this back and come all the way over. And let's just come back out and see what that did. Uh, it didn't narrow. We're almost up to almost half and it narrowed it somewhat. So the question is, as we go through this, are there enough votes there that we're almost at half? You see the lead now? It's pulling away. Is, is there enough there for Hillary Clinton in what's left in Broward and in Miami-Dade to pull it off? If you start to look at it right now, you get more and more skeptical as you move from 93. The question is, as we move that up to 95 and beyond. Uh, if you're in the Trump campaign, you're very happy with this right now. And again, you're looking at your performance in some of these the, in the rock rural places, the rock conservative places, Donald Trump has performed well. And in some of these swing areas here, he's overperformed. Even where he's losing, he's overperformed Mitt Romney, again, particularly in the Tampa area, which matters because it's a population center. Look at the vote count there. If Hillary Clinton has a bigger lead here. She's got, you know, that's another 8, 10, 20,000 votes, depending on what the size of that lead is. Uh, that's a significant in keeping the margins down there. Uh, Florida, we're going to try to get from 93 to 98 to 99. But if you're in the Trump campaign, uh, it's 29 electoral votes you have to have. At the moment, if you're in the Trump war room, you're reasonably optimistic, but you're waiting to see, again, up to 48 percent here. We're only we're up to 83 percent here. So this is where the clock starts to tick against Hillary Clinton. Now that you're up to 83 percent, Palm Beach in, County, 83 percent in Palm Beach County. So there's not that many more votes to come in. What comes in is coming in in her favor by a lopsided margin. But then you say, OK, we're up to 83 percent. Boom. Uh, she's getting closer. The question is, do you get close enough uh, with what's still left? Uh, so we'll count to the last vote in Florida. I just the point I was trying to make before is that earlier on. Remember, as you look at this map, live results feeding in. Hillary Clinton is unlikely to win Nebraska. It's just the votes coming in early on. The same with these other, some of the Illinois, perhaps, but Missouri, we don't think so. But Ohio was Democratic last time Wolf was here. It has moved to Republican now, 51 to 44. And the reason, last time I talked to Wolf, I said there's a lot of votes to be counted in all of these rural areas here. They are now filling in for Donald Trump. So Ohio is shifting Republican as well at the moment, Wolf. All right, uh, John, we have some projections right now. All right, we project that uh, Donald Trump will carry a huge prize. Texas, with all of its 38 electoral votes, a big win for Donald Trump in the state of Texas. Democrats had hope, but not uh, it's not going to happen for them this time around. Donald Trump also carries uh, Bill Clinton's home state of Arkansas with six electoral votes. Donald Trump gets two more uh, states in his column. Let's take a look at the Electoral College map right now, where it stands with those two uh, states that Donald Trump has just won. He has now taken the lead. Donald Trump has 128 electoral votes. Hillary Clinton has 97 electoral votes. Remember, 270 are needed to win the White House. So let's go back over to John King. Uh, 
John, he's taken the the lead of the Electoral College count, which is significant right now. There's still plenty of other states out there. I was just doing some experimenting while you were over there, just trying to do some math. As you look at this map right now, as you look at the map fill in, and I want to again caution our viewers, and I'm sorry for those who have been with us all night, I'm being repetitive, but these are live results feeding in. These are not states that we have called in many cases. You see Nebraska, you see New Mexico, you see Missouri, for example. We haven't called those states, so they're blue at the moment. It's very early results. But as you look at the map right now, if you're Donald Trump, you're leading in Florida. You're leading in Virginia. We've got some votes to be counted there in the D.C. suburbs. But you just pulled ahead in Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Again, very, very early. But if you're in the Trump war room, you're looking at this, and you're saying, we told you so. We have a path. Now, does that path hold up as we go into the next hour and the next hour? And I sort of suspect the next hour and the next hour? Um, we'll see. We'll see. <coughs> results in these places, especially when you're looking, you know, a few moments ago, I was looking at Virginia. We're up to 71 percent now. Yeah. Now, we've seen this before. I have been through many elections where the Republican is leading in Virginia very late. They start to get happy in the Republican war room. Well, zoom into those counties the where there's still a lot of votes right. outstanding. Then, then these, show, you know, show them to us. Right. Then these votes come in. So you've got Loud, Loudoun County, only 85 percent of the vote in right there if you pull Where's that out. Where's the outstanding vote? Yeah, it's, it's all over the place is what I'm saying. Prince William County, we're only up to 16 percent. Fairfax City, 57%. So in the Washington, D.C. suburbs, which, as you can see, are filling in predominantly blue, I just want to check Arlington. It's the votes there. They're up to 94% in Arlington, so fewer can, votes can there. Can you do for Virginia what you did in Florida? Sure. Show us where those uh, those votes, the, the outstanding so we'll vote, really remains. Here. We're going to slide this back a little bit, pick a number. Let's just go back to 75% again. So here's where you're looking at the places where you have 75% of the vote or less, and you see some small pockets of red, the problem, if you're the Trump campaign, number one, you're leading right now. I'm not saying it's a huge problem, but these are smaller areas. You see down here, Norfolk area down here, I want to pull it out. 3% of the state population, <coughs> Hillary Clinton is winning the 62% of the vote, and she's winning 68 to 26. So there's a potentially, again, it's not guaranteed that the margin stays the same when the rest come in, but potentially a lot of votes for the Democrat there, potentially a fair chunk of votes for the Democrat here in Portsmouth. And then again, the biggest issue always in a close race in Virginia is what happens up here. And I just want to stretch it out a little bit. Let me turn this off and just stretch it out a little bit. Look, so you're, here's Washington, D.C., and you're across the river. And so most of the votes are counted in these counties, which are lopsidedly Democratic. There are no votes in Arlington? No, they're counted. That means they're already counted. They're past, they're, no, they're, they're past the 70 percent. So here's where you're still waiting. You're only at 57 percent Fairfax County. That's 13 percent of the state population. Well, that's a lot of votes to come in. And again, they're coming in at the moment, lopsidedly Democratic. They're coming in here closer. Prince William County, Donald Trump has made a run at this. And again, if, if Donald Trump ekes out of victory in Virginia, you're going to look at this county compared to four years ago and say it's one of the places where in the, the further out suburbs beginning to get into the exurbs, Donald Trump performed very well. Now, I want to pull this back over just so we get the whole statewide perspective. And you look, uh, the map is filling in as you would expect it to, except for the fact that Donald Trump is running more competitive in some areas. But we're still waiting. I just want to check down here. We only have 53 percent Richmond City. This is a Democratic area. She's going to run up some more votes here. You see 75 to 18. Uh, so there's more votes for here. But but you're up to 72 percent. Again, we've been through many elections where the Republican is ahead early on, and then this vote comes in, and it changes everything. But if you're the Trump campaign, did you think, you know, did, or the, flip it, if you're the Democrats, did you think two weeks ago on election night we would be looking at Virginia as the count got up above 70 percent? And we were counting the votes. The so state that President Obama carried twice. Carried twice. Now, it used to be a red state, but it has been moving, especially because of the growth in these suburbs and the, the fast-growing Latino population. So the fact that Trump is so competitive, even if he narrowly loses this state, right now he's winning and he's in position to potentially win it, even if he narrowly loses this state, it tells you he is performing in a way uh, that is going to surprise some Democrats. And that's why when Let's you go look, to North Carolina again, right now. North Carolina, you're just moving just Do the, to the same south thing right for here. us in North Carolina. The 71% of right. the vote is now in, and Donald Trump still has a lead. Uh, you see a lead of what, about 20,000 votes. So we move it back again to around 75%. And what are you missing? We got a long way to go here. We, we had a long way to go here because you've got a lot of places where, and these are largely Democratic areas, so this is, but I'll show you the Republican. The population centers here are Democratic. You see Durham County here, where the Democrats are looking for some votes. You come down here, Cumberland County, Fayetteville, only. It's a, this is the absentee vote. This means we don't have a big dump of real today election day votes as yet. Uh, this is a smaller county, Robeson County, but still, Bob's, no, that's more competitive, a five-point race there in that county. So you're looking at what's left out there. Uh, there are some Republican areas. Let's go through them and look. Uh, they tend to be a little bit smaller, but this one's not bad. There are some votes for Trump potentially here. We don't know what's coming over here. I want to move over to Wilmington. 
I showed you this before. Clinton was narrowly ahead. Now Trump is very narrowly ahead, uh, very competitive. So North Carolina, again, uh, there's enough out here that you can't make any leaps. We have a very close race, and we're going to have a very close race as we count well, through. What about the, Charlotte? The, uh, that's well, a heavily populated area, almost right. 10% of the population. Mecklenburg County, and we only have 14%. So if you're the Clinton campaign, in both campaigns, there's a little nail-biting, a little running to the math, scribbling, trying to figure things out, frantic phone calls to county chairmen and all these places to find out where, you know, which precincts are still out, where are they coming from. But if you're the Clinton campaign, you are assured that you've got a lot more votes to come out of Mecklenburg County, County and Charlotte when you pull out yeah. to the whole state. Let's so go to Ohio. Again, we're going to keep at this. You can leave that up if you want if we go to Ohio and see what's still out. Again, a lot of the map filling in here. So just to remind our viewers, almost right. half of the vote is now in, in, in Ohio, and Donald Trump has a significant lead, almost 200,000 votes uh, over Hillary Clinton. Almost 200,000 votes, and yet, and yet, a lot of votes still to be counted because the votes coming in the same thing way, for Ohio. With, it's, still it, it, it is, it's still up. It's still up. That's what I'm saying. Here. We moved this back about 75 percent. So you see how many counties, how many counties have yet to get there. It's a lot of them. It, it, see, you go to these rural counties, 40 percent of the vote is counted, just shy of 75 percent there, 64 percent here. So you're going through this. What does that tell you? It, it, this is encouraging news if you're the Trump campaign in the sense that there's a lot of votes to be counted. Look at all this red, and there's still a lot of votes to be counted out here. So the Trump campaign, you're thinking, sure, it's only a couple hundred in this county, maybe a thousand there, maybe fifteen hundred there, but that's a lot of counties. It's a lot of math to do. So the question for the Democrats is, can you make it up here? These, you know, again, you're talking ten percent of the state population, Franklin County, where Columbus is, is in. only a third of the vote is in. So, you know, what's going to happen is Trump will get five hundred here, fifteen hundred here, two hundred, you know, two thousand there. Can Clinton get 20,000, 50,000 out of a place like this as the margin comes up? The Democrats have to make it up. You see, you can just tell by looking. There's a lot of areas where Republican votes have yet to be counted. The question, this is the biggest one of all up here. Cleveland, only 33% of the vote. Cuyahoga County there. Let's just move over to Lorain County, 45% of the vote. It's Democratic area, but Trump's running reasonably. Let's see, 51 to 44. 57. Uh, Trump is running stronger. This is a blue collar area. We've talked about this all along. Lorraine, Ohio, you're, that's, you're talking about your trade message. You're talking about your immigration message. Trump running stronger there. So as you pull it back out, let's come back to 2016. So make sure we stay there. Uh, this is fun. I mean, this is, you know, but that's, it's starting to inch out a little bit. I want to just pull this over. We make sure we have the full count of the vote. And you look at it through. It's, it's, he's starting to pull away. I mean, in Ohio, pulling away. Almost 200,000 vote lead right now. Yeah, 200,000 vote lead. And, and that's significant. You're getting the 200, 200 300,000 vote lead. And then you're coming to here and you say, okay, you know, what have I got left? Um, you know, she might have 100,000 there, maybe a little bit more, but you have 200,000. That's the math you're doing now in these war rooms when you're going to call all your people and say, in this Democratic area, what's still missing? How much am I going to get? Athens is relatively small. So there's some there for Clinton. Uh, Clearly, Trump more, is looking good in Ohio. Right I want to go to New Hampshire right. right now because look at how close it is in New Hampshire. It, it's only Hillary Clinton is only 72 votes ahead of Donald Trump in the state of New Hampshire. Look at this: 47.5 percent, 47.4 percent, 19 percent of the vote is in. You're noticing a trend? Yes. Florida, mm -hmm. North Carolina, Ohio, now New Hampshire. And these are the states that are going to decide who the next president Ohio of the United States too. is. Ohio. Uh, these are the states. That you go You go. Florida, Virginia, North Carolina, Ohio. Now New Hampshire. It's only four. It's the smallest. We just went through, you know. We only have, four electoral. We, we have, yeah, we haven't gotten to Pennsylvania yet, which is 20. It's only four, uh, but it's key. It's key to the Trump math, and it's a place Hillary Clinton very much wants to win. We don't know much about New Hampshire yet, to be perfectly honest, because if you look, it's 19% of the vote. Uh, it's come down to Concord. This is a liberal area. You know, that's 100% reporting already. So in a sense, I say we know nothing. In a sense, that's, that is something. If that's 100%, there's not more votes to be gained for Hillary Clinton in one place where she would get them. It's not a giant population center. New Hampshire's more many small towns than it is any one big population center. But you come down to Nashua, this is a place Secretary Clinton's going to have to run it up. You come over here to the seacoast, Portsmouth. We have no votes from Portsmouth yet. This is where she's going to have to run it up. Um, you know, as you look at this, but you've got a whole lot of business still to be done. I just want to show you, you go back in history, it sprinkles back and forth. There's a Democratic area up here. This is where it's key for the Republicans to run it up. Manchester City, if you come in down in here, just come down and come around. That's Goffstown just outside of Manchester. Manchester City, we'll see what happens here. Yeah. Donald Trump Donald Trump was there just the other night. This is a gritty blue collar. Uh, you know, if you go, there's 51 to 43 in the early returns there. That means, again, remember this, 51 for Secretary Clinton, 
55. Donald Trump is not over before. It's, is it the same as Mitt Romney? This is a place. You could have a state where you start to look. We haven't talked much about the third party candidates yet. There could be a state or two where we start to think, are they changing the margin? Uh, that could be one right there in the state of New Hampshire, that 4% for Gary Johnson. Let's go to Michigan right now, because Donald Trump is ahead uh, with only, what, about 15 Fifteen percent of the vote is in, but in Michigan, uh, this is a state that Donald Trump was predicting strongly he would do well. And you see the, right there. Uh, that's this that's is the, the national vote. I was just going to say, in the Trump war room right now, they would like to hit freeze. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, red at the moment. The early results. If they could just freeze the map right now, they'd be quite happy. I, I don't say that to be you know a smart aleck. I just they're they're looking at themselves right now in the early returns. They're, He's up by almost twenty thousand. They're, they're doing what they said they would do. They are competitive across the Rust Belt. Very early return, so let's just you know take a breath. But they are proving that they'll be competitive across the Rust Belt. We'll see when we get from 15% and higher. Uh, but that's a very close race right now. So what are you looking for here? Uh, number one, you're going to look here in Wayne County in Detroit. We only have 5% of the vote. This is your biggest chunk of votes, and it's your biggest chunk for the Democrats right here Almost in 20 Wayne County. Of them, yeah. now, so if, if Donald Trump keeps it that close in Wayne County, uh, then Donald Trump has more than a good chance to win this again. It's 5% of the vote, so we don't know where it's coming from. We'll see how that one plays out. You move up here, Oakland County. This is in, out in the suburbs. This is Mitt Romney's birthplace, Oakland County. Uh, Hillary Clinton running ahead. I just want to match this one up, 51-43, 54-46. Uh, so she's a little under Romney. I mean, a little under Obama. <coughs> he's around where Romney is. 37% of the vote counted there. One of the places we will look at here, as always, just for historical perspective, Macomb County is the legendary home of the so-called Reagan Democrats. How did Ronald Reagan win Michigan blue-collar voters? Uh, Donald Trump wants to prove to us tonight that he can create new Trump Democrats. So we'll see what happens. We have zip, zero, from Macomb County right now. And just for you watching at home, because we have zero, we're not hiding Donald Trump. They're alphabetical. Until you get results, the names are listed on the, on the map in an alphabetical way. So once, the, once votes come in... Uh, Trump will jump up ahead over the third party. Let's candidates. go to Pennsylvania. This is this is but this is just very quickly early on. It's these are conservative areas. So Donald Trump is ahead right now because votes are coming in in conservative areas. But that's not to criticize. That's to say he's doing what he needs to do in these conservative areas. We'll see how it plays out as we go. You wanted to go to Pennsylvania, twelve percent of the vote. Um, Donald Trump is ahead by what 107? I mean Hillary Clinton is ahead right. of Donald Trump by what about 177,000 votes uh, with 12 percent of the vote in. She's got 60.2 percent to 36.4 percent. That's a healthy lead early on. I suspect this is about the. Uh, this won't last very long, uh, but Gary Johnson is ahead in one county in Pennsylvania at the moment right now. I just wanted to point out to viewers at home what this color is. You're going to see, you'll see different colors in the map. If there's a tie, you'll see a different color as well. So we'll see if that holds up and pop it. So what are we going to look for here? A couple things. Number one, and I know Jeffrey Lord is in the room tonight. This, what in Pennsylvania they call the T. Up from the center and across the top is very conservative territory with the exception of Erie up here. One of the questions will be, as we were talking about Macomb County in Michigan, uh, how does Donald Trump do in a place like Erie? Well, let's see. A five-point lead right there. I suspect that's better than it was four years ago. And there you go, 57 to 41. 16 points in Erie. Uh, if that holds up at 65%, that tells you something. This is, again, a blue-collar area, uh, not unlike Buffalo, New York, my friend's hometown, uh, a place where Donald Trump has tried to sell his immigration and his trade message, and that's a good number. So let's look down here in Allegheny County. This is more about where it should be, 60 to 35 if you're a Democrat. That's what you need there. Let's look back here, 57, 42, 15 points. So you come back in there. This one, only 9%. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, both candidates focusing on that area. But the, the key is over here. We have nothing from the suburbs yet. We have 37% from Center City, Philadelphia. Watch this number right here. In Philadelphia County, in an hour or two, when we're counting Pennsylvania, maybe three, uh, when we're still counting the votes here, uh, is this margin around 400,000 or more? If it's not, Donald Trump's in play in, in Pennsylvania. Hillary Clinton has to run it up in Philadelphia by 400,000 votes, even more than that, if she can. And then after that, if she can do that, that makes her competitive. And you see all these suburbs right here. This race will be won or lost. She's currently leading by a little bit. This is significant. Again, this is only 1% of the vote. Donald Trump's running about even in Bucks County. The last Republican to win Pennsylvania in a presidential election was George H.W. Bush. He won Bucks County. Uh, no Republican has won it since. So is, can it be close? Mitt Romney kept it close. If you go back 50 to 49 in Bucks County four years ago, uh, if Donald Trump can keep it there, uh, if it keeps him in play, he would, if this is red at the end of the night, that's a good sign for Donald Trump. And then you want to look at these other counties here. 
This is right here. This is where Melania Trump gave her speech when she went to Berwyn, Pennsylvania, Chester County. It's about 4% of the state population. This used to be rock-solid Republican suburbs. But, again, Let's the go. Democrats have done more successful, especially with suburban women. Watch, we'll watch Chester County as we get Let's there. check it, Virginia, right now, and, and then North Carolina. You see the red? I mean, it's just, at the moment, it's staying. Uh, so you keep thinking, every time you look, are these states going to change? We're up to 76% in Virginia. Uh, we're getting 60,000 votes, right? 61,000 votes ahead in Virginia for Donald Trump right now. And so the question is, you start going, where's, where, where are the Republican votes? So you check these smaller rural counties, and so you're going through these, and you see all the 100%. So if you're in the Trump campaign, you know that in this rock-solid conservative area, yeah. you've pretty much... This is the state of uh, Senator Tim Kaine, the well, vice presidential running mate. This, he was once the governor of Virginia. This would be beyond embarrassing to the Democrats. And if Donald Trump wins Virginia, uh, Donald Trump is probably going to win North Carolina because this is a more Democratic state than North Carolina. So it's one of the things you watch. So we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're only at 76 percent of the vote. Again, one of the things you always watch in the state of Virginia is, number one, I just want to come down here to look at the Virginia Beach area. Uh, this is a very competitive area down here. Uh, Donald Trump running at 50 percent. Let's compare it as we go back here. 51, 48. So that's about the – she's low. She's underperforming. Again, uh, if this holds up, we're going to look down here and see maybe the third-party candidates are coming out of here down here. You have to check the exit polls, do some other research to do that. But we'll watch those numbers down there. And then you come up. I just want to check in these Democratic areas, 96 percent, 66 percent. So some more votes to be had here and some more votes to be had at Norfolk City. This is African-American turnout. So it's not just the percentage. In the end, it's the math. How many did you, not just what percentage are you getting, but how many of your voters have you turned out in a place like Norfolk? But then again, Wolf, well, this is going to sound competitive and broken record, but this is where your votes are. Just across the Potomac River in the and northern Virginia County, 85% of the 85%, 55 to 40, if you do that math, 52 to 47. So Secretary Clinton is running stronger than President Obama there. Fairfax County, up, almost up to 70%. But look at the numbers here. This is the population center here. You have more population. So you go through this one here. Arlington County is just about in. Alexandria City. Is in. Those are big Democratic votes there. So you're looking around here. You're trying to hunt. You come down. Prince William County, we're only at 20 percent. Yeah, Prince William County, only at 26 percent. Hillary Clinton there. I just want to compare that to four years ago again. Uh, she's underperforming at the moment. She is underperforming Wolf here. So Virginia is very close. There's still a lot of votes to be counted in northern Virginia. That's the difference. Hillary Clinton has closed the gap somewhat, but got a little ways to go still, Wolf. Uh, now let's do a key race alert right now. All right, let's start out with Florida right now. 94% of the vote is in. You see Donald Trump maintains an impressive lead of 141,000 votes over Hillary Clinton. 29 electoral votes at stake. Uh, Trump is ahead impressively in Ohio. Trump is also ahead. More than half of the vote is in. Donald Trump has a 235,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton. Very impressive lead in Ohio right now. 18 electoral votes. In Virginia, Trump is ahead there. He's got a lead of 42,000 plus in Virginia. 77% of the vote is in. Donald Trump is ahead in Virginia. He is also ahead significantly in Georgia. 384,000 votes ahead of Hillary Clinton. 41% of the vote is in. 16 electoral votes in Georgia right now. Another state where Donald Trump leads. There are more states. More numbers coming in. 76% uh, of the vote is in in North Carolina. And Trump has a 56,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton. 49.5% to 40 47.9%. He is ahead in North Carolina right now. 15 electoral votes there. In Michigan, 17% of the vote is in. Look at this. Donald Trump is ahead in Michigan right now as well. 28,000 plus votes over Hillary Clinton. 49% to 45, almost 46% for Hillary Clinton. 16 important electoral votes in Michigan right now. In New Hampshire, 22% of the vote is now in. Trump is ahead in New Hampshire as well. 1,700 vote lead. Now it's just gone down to 900 vote lead. Look at how close it is. 47.7% to 47.2%. A quarter of the vote almost is in in New Hampshire. In Wisconsin, 12% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a 25,000 vote lead over Donald Trump. Ten electoral votes in Wisconsin. Now, but this is very early. Only 12% of the vote in Wisconsin is in right now. Uh, we've got more. Colorado, 42% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a 55,000-plus vote lead over Donald Trump. 
42%, once again, of the vote is in nine electoral votes in the state of Colorado. And in Pennsylvania, Hillary Clinton right now has an impressive 154,000 vote lead over Donald Trump. 17% of the vote is now in. Look at this, 56% for Hillary Clinton, almost 41% for Donald Trump. Pennsylvania has 20 electoral votes, but only 17% of the vote is now in. Let's take a look at the electoral map, see where things stand right now. According to our projections, Donald Trump is ahead. He has 128 electoral votes. Hillary Clinton has 97 electoral votes. Remember, 270. That's the number you need to be elected president of the United States. Donald Trump has the red states. Hillary Clinton has the blue states. All those yellow states, we cannot make a projection too early to, to call. Let's go to the, uh, let's check in with uh, some of the campaign headquarters right now. Uh, Jim Acosta is joining us. Jim, uh, you're over at Trump headquarters. Brianna Keeler is at Clinton headquarters. Jim, what is the mood over there? Uh, there are some happy campers over here at Trump campaign headquarters, Wolf. Uh, it is very clear every time the uh, returns are flashed on the screens here from the state of Florida, this place erupts into cheers, and it's been happening uh, in just the last several minutes when they've been flashing returns from Ohio and Virginia, these other battlegrounds uh, that Donald Trump must win. And Kellyanne Conway, the Trump campaign manager, sent out an email uh, that sort of captures the mood in their war room. She says there's a buzz in the war room that can be felt across the nation. A win is imminent, and America will once again be great again. A lot of campaign spin in that, but obviously reflects where they are right now. We're hearing a lot of uh, you know, pessimism and uh, some people sounding very glum inside this campaign, inside this operation earlier today. Uh, that mood has uh, done a 180, Wolf. Uh, they are feeling much more optimistic tonight. They were even cheering uh, when they were showing the returns for Marco Rubio, a past uh, Trump campaign foe from the primary days. Uh, and so uh, I, I would say, Wolf, uh, that this place does not sound uh, like a losing campaign at this point. They are, uh, I, won't, I won't say jubilant, uh, but every time they, they flash Florida on the screen, it goes wild here. Yeah, yeah. New York City uh, over the New York Hilton. Uh, uh, Jim, let's go to Brianna Keeler. She's only a mile and a half away or so over the Javits Center. That's the Clinton headquarters. What's the mood over there, Brianna? Well, I will tell you, Wolf, that there are a number of anxious faces, uh, faces that I'm looking at here in the crowd. Uh, when we were listening to some of the projections come in at 9 p.m., Hillary Clinton winning some of the states that she was expected to, a lot of cheering. But as we're watching now, some of these very close states, there are a lot of people who are glued to the projections. They've been switching in and out of the uh, big screen between uh, an outside program going on where we just saw Senator Chuck Schumer speaking. He could be the Senate Majority Leader if Democrats are to take over the Senate. But going back now to watching projections, this is what the crowd uh, is anxious to be looking for as they see Florida, they see the vote count very tight. Now, meanwhile, Secretary Clinton is about a mile and a half from here. She's at the Peninsula Hotel. She is uh, obviously watching uh, these returns as well. She's with her family. She's with her husband and her daughter and her son-in-law as well as her grandkids and a, uh, a number of close aides and longtime confidants. She has has been working on her speech, uh, both speeches, I should say, and she has aides who are sort of working in some of the fixes she's been doing. But again, a lot of curiosity here about how the night is going to unfold and which of those speeches she's going to be giving Wolf. A lot of uncertainty right now. All right, guys, we'll get back to you soon. Let's go over to Jake and Dana. Look, look at the map right now. Take a look over here. You see Clinton with 97 electoral votes, Trump with 128, you need 270 to win the White House. Uh, and you see, uh, you see what's going on. Trump is doing remarkably well. We have said from the beginning that for Donald Trump to win, he would need to run the table. And right now we are seeing that there is a path, a very clear path for Donald Trump. He is very competitive in all the key states, including Virginia, uh, which could possibly be, uh, uh, there could be the crack in the blue wall, the firewall that Hillary Clinton had. We're seeing uh, very tight races in the Midwest. The numbers are still coming in. A very uh, nail biters, not just in North Carolina, uh, but Florida. It seems entirely possible uh, that Donald Trump uh, could end up having a very strong night, even the night that he's been dreaming of. We have a picture, I think, of Donald Trump with his running mate, uh, Mike Pence, <coughs> watching the returns coming in. This is a much stronger night than a lot of Republican officials thought was going to happen. We still don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, the key states that we really need, uh, that Hillary Clinton really needs to maintain, let's just put this on, on the board, uh, we need to make uh, Hillary Clinton uh, needs to keep Pennsylvania and she, he, she needs to keep New Hampshire, uh, she needs to keep uh, Michigan, and she needs to keep 
uh, Virginia. Those four are the ones for all the Hillary Clinton supporters out there wondering, oh my God, we're going to lose Ohio. Oh my God, we're going to lose Florida. Those four are the path. That's the firewall. Pennsylvania, Virginia, uh, New Hampshire, and Michigan. But if there is a crack in any of those four states, this is going to be uh, a night where the, the Jacob Javits Center is the wrong place for Hillary Clinton to be. Those four states are states that uh, President Obama carried twice. That's right. And look, of all those four states, Virginia is the biggest surprise for, really mostly for Democrats. I will say that Republicans uh, outside of the Trump campaign told the Trump campaign long ago, forget it, Virginia's gone, even before Tim Kaine became. Take a look at this. Uh, take a look at this, Dana. You, you see uh, these four states right there, and you see uh, the states that, uh, that Jake just circled, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire. Let's start with Virginia. Donald Trump is ahead there by 20,000-plus votes in Virginia and Pennsylvania. Don Hillary Clinton is ahead. 221,506 votes uh, in uh, Pennsylvania. Hillary Clinton just changed to 227,000 votes. Look at how close it is in New Hampshire. Uh, only 404 a vote. Uh, that's a Donald Trump lead over Hillary Clinton with a quarter of the vote in, in New Hampshire. And take a look in Michigan right now. You see uh, Donald Trump has a lead of 44,000 plus votes in Michigan right now. 19% of the vote is in. You heard, all of us heard from Donald Trump's uh, advisors over these past several weeks. They had a path and at least right now, it looks like they do have a credible path. They do absolutely have a credible path. And, and uh, look, if this night ends up being the way that Donald Trump and his advisors uh, think and hope that it will be, um, boy, I mean, it's going to put the polling industry out of business. It's going to be the, the voter projection bis uh, industry out of business because uh, there is there. I don't know of one poll that suggested that Donald Trump was going to have this kind of night that he seems to be on track to having. And in fact, you know, we're all we all look at these websites um, I don't need to name them, but, but uh, that, that prognosticate the odds that Hillary Clinton has this percentage odds that she's going to win. And most of them had Hillary Clinton, the odds of her becoming the president, at over 65 percent. Well, I just logged on to one of them, and it has Donald Trump at 54 percent. Now, these are not, this is not science. This is prognostication based on data coming in and polls and the, and the like. But really, we're seeing, first of all, this is not the repudiation of Donald Trump. And, and Trumpism that I think a lot of Republicans uh, in Washington, D.C. and Democrats hoped. But beyond that, we're seeing, abs as you say, Wolf, a credible path for Donald Trump to the White House. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it certainly could. And, and you know, Jim was talking about the feeling inside the Trump uh, victory party, uh, which, of course, they always call it before we get, we get the results. It's not just there. It's the photo of Donald Trump and Mike Pence watching the returns with the people who have been working on their campaign in the war room is one thing. And then the people who are closest to Donald All Trump right. are watching in a room right now, and they said that the mood has changed completely. Yeah, we have two more projections right now. All right, CNN now projects that Hillary Clinton will carry the state of Connecticut with its seven electoral votes. Hillary Clinton wins in Connecticut. Uh, CNN also projects Donald Trump will win Louisiana with its eight electoral votes. Uh, another win for Donald Trump in Louisiana. Let's take a look at the electoral college map, see where it stands with these latest two projections. You can see right now Donald Trump still ahead. He has 136 electoral votes to Hillary Clinton's 104 electoral votes. Remember, 270, that's what needed, that's what's needed to be elected president of the United States. The red states we've projected going to uh, Donald Trump, the blue states we've projected going to Hillary Clinton. Let's go over to John King to watch what's going on. John, you're studying this at the Magic Wall so closely right now. I'm just going through and you're trying to look, let's just start down here in Florida. I was just emailing back and forth with a key Democrat and Republicans who know this state very well. The Republican is not a fan of Donald Trump, trust me, who thinks that Donald Trump has enough to hold on here. That doesn't mean he will, uh, but we're up to 95% here now. And so every time we do this, we go back to the bank of what's left out there. And there's still some votes left in these Democratic areas, but 94%. First, let's just go back and do the statewide math. You see right there, 49, go ahead. I was going to say, I want to get back to Florida in a moment, but let me take a quick break. Uh, we're counting down. We're counting down to another round of poll closings right now at the top of the hour. We're going to get results from three more battleground states that will help decide this presidential election. We're talking about Nevada, Utah, and Iowa. In Miami Beach, uh, people are watching CNN. They're following the close race unfolding in Florida, very close. That crucial battleground state still too early to call. More votes coming in <laughs> right after this quick break.
Right now, we have a major projection in the battle for the United States Congress. Uh, CNN can now project that Republicans will keep control of the House of Representatives. House Speaker Paul Ryan's fight to maintain the Republican majority paying off, dashing the Democrats' slim hopes of retaking the chamber. This is an important win for Republicans as we await the outcome of the fight for the U.S. Senate and the presidential race. Uh, Jake and Dana, Dana, we fully expected the Republicans would win. We're still going to get the number, but, uh, but they will be the majority, uh, and that is significant. Yeah, it, it, not a surprise at all. We, we knew that uh, the Republicans were going to likely keep control of the House, even when Democrats were having a great period at the beginning of October. It, it seemed unlikely that the House was going to be able to uh, go to from um, Republican to Democrat. Dana, you've been watching this so closely. That's right, and we should uh, tell our viewers that what this means for us is not that we've called every House race. Obviously, that would be impossible at this point, at time of the night. It means that we, looking at the numbers, see that there's no path for the Democrats to get the 30 seats needed to retake control. Well, let's get back to the race for the White House right now. We have a, another key race alert. All right, take a look at this. We'll start with Florida. 95% of the vote is in, and Donald Trump has an impressive 100, almost 112,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton, 49% to 47.8%, 29 electoral votes in Florida. In Ohio, 61% of the vote is in, and Donald Trump there is a very impressive 353, almost 354,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton, 18 electoral votes in Ohio. In Virginia, Donald Trump is leading there, but very, very narrowly, only 10,123 votes. 80% of the vote in Virginia is in, 13 electoral votes there. In Georgia, almost half of the vote is in there, John, Donald Trump. Once again, has a very impressive lead of uh, more than 365,000 votes, 16 electoral votes at stake in Georgia right now. Let's take a look at more results coming in, starting with North Carolina. 78% of the vote is in. Trump maintains a lead, a significant lead, 85,000 votes over Hillary Clinton uh, with 15 electoral votes at stake in North Carolina. In Michigan, 20% of the vote is in. Trump is ahead there as well by more than 41,000 votes. Trump is ahead over Hillary Clinton, 16, 16 electoral votes in Michigan. In New Hampshire, very close there, almost a third of the vote is in. Donald Trump maintains a lead of more than 1,800 votes over Hillary Clinton. It's very close, 47.8% to 47%. Almost a third of the vote is in, four electoral votes in, uh, in New Hampshire and Wisconsin. 21% of the vote is in, and there in Wisconsin, Trump is leading there as well. 43,000 plus votes over Hillary Clinton, 10 electoral votes at stake in Wisconsin. Trump is ahead right now with 21% of the vote is in, in Wisconsin. In Colorado, more than half of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton is ahead in Colorado. She has more than 88,000 vote lead over Donald Trump. Nine electoral votes in Colorado and in Pennsylvania. A quarter of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a significant lead there of 276 thousand plus votes over Donald Trump, uh, 269,000 right now, 20 electoral votes in Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at the electoral college map to see the all-important electoral college map. Trump is ahead. He has 136 electoral votes compared to Hillary Clinton's 104. 270 are needed to win the White House. Let's go over to John King over at the Magic Wall. He's taking a look. Donald Trump is doing remarkably well, John, in so many of these states that President Obama carried twice. And so we'll get to the results in a minute, but first the question people are asking at home, does he have a path now? With what we are seeing, does he have a path? And remember, this is where we started tonight. We had Secretary 268 to start tonight. All she needed to do was win one more state if, and it's a big if at this hour, she held all the blues. So let's just go through this where we are right now. Okay? Donald Trump, we had at 204. Well, Donald Trump is leading right now in Florida. Let's see if he can hold on to Florida. That's 29. Donald Trump is leading right now in North Carolina. Let's see if he can hold that. Look where that gets Donald Trump. Let's assume we still, we're not out west yet. This may come down. We could come down Arizona and Nevada in this race, but let's just say Donald Trump wins Arizona, where he was leading in the late polls. That gets him to 259, Wolf. He's leading in Virginia right now. That would do it. Let's assume Clinton comes back in Virginia and holds that, just for the sake of argument. Michigan would do it. Or if somehow Michigan stayed blue, Wisconsin would get him to 269. New Hampshire could do it under that scenario. So there are now several different paths as we watch this play out. What does it come down to? It comes down to counting to the final vote there. we got a ways to go here still. And it could come down, let's switch maps and see, it could come down to a state 
that most Democrats and even many Republicans thought months ago was a sure bet. And if you look at this right now, we're up to 80 percent of the vote. She has closed the gap. In just the last few minutes, she has closed the gap to about 10,000 votes, if you see it right there. So you're looking, number one, if you think about it, what did I say? Michigan, Virginia, and then we'll look at Minnesota, Wisconsin, which are less likely, but they're still in play. So the question is, can Hillary Clinton come back? The answer is yes, but the clock is ticking. 95% in Loudoun County, 80% in Fairfax County. This is a big vote center. So That's 13.5% the, yes, of this, the this population is, of the state. You remember the Senate race a few years ago. Everybody was stunned that Ed Gillespie, the Republican, was so close to Senator Mark Warner. And Ed Gillespie was leading at times in the night, and then these votes came in snap it changed. That's not saying that is what's going to happen tonight, but we have to wait to see what happens in the northern Virginia suburbs. Hillary Clinton now, you know, that's well, back up now to, what do we have there? 13,000. Yeah, a little over 10, 10, 12,000 in there. So if you're, the clock is starting to run at 80%. So Virginia's one place we'll watch. Trump wins that. Again, he's got to hold these ones, and let's just check on these as we go. Up to 79%. He's got 100,000 votes. You get up, you're up to 80% now. You're talking about a pretty good lead, but what's out? So let's look. 94% there. We're still waiting for a decent amount of votes here, but it's only 3% of the state population. I want to go over to Charlotte. This could come down to how many votes are still left out here. Only at 43% here. So North Carolina's not over, but if you're Donald Trump, and you're now at just shy of 80%, and you're looking at a three, you know, two and a half, three point lead there, uh, you're getting increasingly confident about that. And as I said, when you check in with people down here, uh, increasingly, even Democrats believe because of his strength in these rural areas up in the panhandle and elsewhere, and because of his running very competitive, in areas like this, and especially here, Barack Obama won, President Obama, Senator and President Obama won this when he was running in his election campaigns, that is there enough down here? 95% now in, in Palm Beach County, so there's more votes to be gained for Secretary Clinton. Is the math enough? Let's move down here to Broward County, 75%. Again, she's likely to pick up some votes, but is it enough? Miami-Dade is almost done at 94%. So there are still some votes in these southeastern counties, hate to say this, to say the words Florida and lawyers in the same sentence, uh, but we're going to wait for these votes to come in, and we're going to see. There's a chance that some of these states are going to carry over into the morning. If you get into, are there are there still other absentee ballot issues out there? But Florida, if you're Trump and you're looking at this one, this one is key right now. Can you hold this lead? We're going to watch that and see as we get up there, and then we'll move out here. The count's a little slower as you move toward the west. We're only up to 21 percent in Michigan, uh, but again, you're starting to build a healthy lead. Some people look at that and say, "Wow, the other way to look at it." is that what we have so far. Well, what about the Democratic areas like Detroit? Right. What we, but what most of what we have so far is from the rural areas. So it's, it's not surprising in the sense that once you look at where the votes are from, that doesn't surprise you. The question is what's happening in places like this. And again, this is going to come down to margins. If Donald Trump is running more competitive in these areas, so 51 to 44, 54 to 46. So do you have a Donald Trump running closer in these outside, <coughs> essentially the counties just outside of Detroit, Let's go down to Wayne County. One of the biggest concerns for the Democrats in this election cycle has been African-American turnout. Wayne County, Detroit, uh, we're only at 11%. So if, if Wayne County ends the night 48-45, Donald Trump is going to win Michigan. Uh, we're only at 11%, so we'll see how this one plays out as we go uh, John, through. I want to go to Virginia right now. There's been a dramatic development in Virginia. It blue. There you yeah, go. there it is. You can see Hillary Clinton has now taken a slightly, what, a, less than 2,000 votes, 47.5% uh, to 47.4%. You see her lead has just grown. Uh, it has, it this has, is Prince William County. It's grown because the vote count, we've gone from 16 to 26% here, and we've gone up to 89% when we were just talking moments ago in Fairfax County. We said we were waiting for a lot of votes. That's why it happened. These votes have come in in Northern Virginia. And again, that's why this state has done this to us in the last couple of cycles. You see the Republican build an early lead, and then you see the Democrat bounce back when these votes come in. Doesn't mean we're done. Uh, she has a tiny, 2, tiny, votes. Yeah, tiny lead. So the, the key here is we know what's still left, right? Loudoun County, she's winning by a healthy margin. We still have 14% of the vote to count. Fairfax County, we're up to 89% now, but she's winning by a lopsided margin here. Let's just check Fairfax City. Up to 86%, some more votes to be counted. But you're looking at the blue is what's out. So then you say, are there Republican votes out there? So you just start to pick them. And you see 100% here and 100% here and 100% here. So if you're the Clinton campaign, you just let out a huge sigh of relief in one state. One state. They're still having... It's not over with right, Virginia no, a lot of, It's not over. It's not over yet, but if, if, you, if you study this state... Uh, you think this one? You think this one just started to move your way? And here's one of the places we're going to keep looking. This here, you know, five percent of the state population. This again used to be. Well, she's five thousand votes ahead now. It just changed, John. Right. So she's uh, she's got a, a bigger lead right now. Hundred uh, one million five hundred 
59,000 to 1,553,000. Yeah, and that's, that's here. That's here. And this is what, again, we've seen many reasons lately. It's very close. Still a swing state that leans blue. Uh, that's what I was waiting for all night long. Again, we're not done. We're not done, but they feel, trust me, just for the fact that that is suddenly blue on this map in this sea of red uh, makes it feel a little bit better as we count the rest of the votes. And so you're looking. Let's go to New Hampshire right now. Let's go to New Hampshire right now. You got it. 34% uh, of the vote right now. It's it, This is what happens in New Hampshire. It fills in kind of looks almost like a checkerboard when it fills in as it goes. Uh, so let's look at the areas. Manchester City, Hillary Clinton ahead. Six points there. Just want to go back and check this. It was 11 points. 11 points four years ago. This is your biggest chunk of population in the state. One of the biggest chunks right here, 8% plus. Uh, remember, Donald Trump had a very big rally here the other night. It was supposed to be the close of his campaign. Then he decided to go on to Grand Rapids, Michigan <laughs> and add an event. Uh, these late campaign stops by Trump, you know, the big criticism has been, does he have the organization? Does he have the nuts and bolts? Does he have the data operation? Does he have the infrastructure? Donald Trump is his own turnout machine to a large degree. The Republican National Committee is mad at me for just saying that. I'm not saying they don't have one, uh, but he is the biggest engine of it. Uh, let's see if he can keep, again, he's, even as, if he doesn't win Manchester, keep it close, then you run it up in the other areas. But I just I want to say but about New Hampshire because we're nowhere near done here. Hudson, along the map, this is the Massachusetts border has become much more populated in recent years. People living right along the Massachusetts border. Hudson, Nashua, we have nothing. I just want to go back in time and check. These are areas where, you know, President Obama won quite handily. Uh, you move over here. This is a Republican area, but a more of a swing area. Remember, Mitt Romney had a lot of connections in New Hampshire, so he ran stronger in some of these places than one would expect. <laughs> to accept. Trump has a good organization there from the primaries. I want to come over, come back to 2016, and come over to the seacoast. This is largely a Democratic area over here by the seacoast, and we have nothing yet. We have nothing yet. So I would just say take a breath on New Hampshire, except for the fact that at the moment, uh, Donald Trump has a lead, 36% of the vote. Still plenty of time here as we go through this one. But let's pull back out and look at the map. I want to look at Wisconsin if, if we can, because, uh, you know, they, they both made plays for it, and it was not supposed to be, it was not really supposed to be in play. It was not supposed to be in play, except the Trump campaign told us they could make a run at they this play, and a lot of people didn't believe them. They had to the dismiss. Let me just tell our viewers, right. a quarter of the vote is in, 26%, right. and Trump is ahead 50% to 44%. He's got what, a, more than 40,000 vote lead right now. And again, so you're looking at a lot of these small rural areas. You're going to see this in so many states tonight. They're filling in red. The question is, where are we percentage-wise in Madison, Dane County? This is the University of Wisconsin. This is a big Democratic area. We're only at 23%. This is key as we go forward. You see the lopsided map here at 23%. As we get 50, 75, 100, Hillary Clinton, if she's going to make up Donald Trump's lead at the moment in Wisconsin, she needs to do it here. Let me pull out and look again as we come around here. Let's come over to Milwaukee and see what we have here. 45%. She's running up a lead pretty big. I just want to see 66 to 28. Let's go back in time and look. 68 to 32. So it's comparable. It's comparable. We're at 45% there. Uh, the question is, we'll check the math. I'll go and check the math next time I get a chance versus 2012 turnout to see how that's going there. The, the percentages are about right. The question is, are you getting the turnout you need? we got a big block up here. We have absolutely nothing. We go back and look. This was a Romney area up here, 53, 46, about 2.5% of the state population. So we have a ways to go here as you start to watch. Let's just go back in time and look for your big areas of blue. You see all down in here, right? And so you come back up here. We got nothing. So if there's room here, if it comes in as it did in 2012, there's room here for Hillary Clinton to make it up. But again, if you're in the Trump campaign and you're looking at a five plus point lead in the state of Wisconsin and you're at 27 percent of the vote, you start to think that late strategy pulled off. And let's just since we're in the neighborhood, come over here and see where we are in Michigan. Twenty three percent. The idea for comparison is to look where the red is. Go back in time. All this is in here is traditionally blue. So you've got some red down here that's traditionally blue, and we're at 47% in places like that. Not huge population centers, but it matters if you're in a very close race. If you turn some of these small areas, that's how you make the difference. I just want to come back over here again and look. Oakland County. By the way, we're getting close. close to the top of the hour. Uh, we might be able to make some more projections. Of it. Go ahead. Great. Well, I just Macomb County, again, I'm a, this is one of my bellwether counties to look at. It's, it's part of the auto industry. It's General Dynamics. This is where Michael Dukakis took the ride in the tank. It's where Ronald Reagan created the so-called legendary Reagan Democrats. If Donald Donald Trump wins Macomb County, that puts him in good standing to be competitive throughout the state of Virginia. And let's, I'm told to go out and check in on Colorado, 53% uh, of the vote. Colorado vote by mail. Uh, they count the vote. And it's competitive out here as well. Again, she's ahead a little short of five points there, or just above five points there, excuse me. Uh, but uh, Colorado, 53% of the vote in. Clinton leading there. This race in Colorado will be decided here. 
Arapahoe County here in the Denver suburbs, and then you come over this way, Jefferson County in the Denver suburbs. I just want to go back and check the historical comparison, 51, 50. So running about right there, 53 over here, running a little behind. But this will be decided in the Denver suburbs again. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this potentially as the year of the Latino. They are key in these counties here. I just want to get it to Denver proper. You see she's running it up in Denver. So of all that, there's a lot of angst at the Clinton campaign headquarters. Colorado, one of the states at the moment, Wolf, that looks like it's filling in the way the Democrats expected it to. But across the Rust Belt, a lot of anxiety in Brooklyn at the moment. We're only seconds away from the top of the hour. Four states are closing. Right now, we're going to be able to make a projection. And CNN projects uh, Donald Trump will carry the state of Montana and its three electoral votes. Another important win for Donald Trump in Montana. He gets those three electoral votes. Every electoral vote will count tonight. Let's get a, a key race alert right now. Too close to call in several states where the polls have now closed. In Iowa, with its six electoral votes, <laughs> too early to call, no projection there. In Nevada, six electoral votes, too early to call, no projection there. Similarly, in Utah, too early to call there, six electoral votes. Evan McMullen, a Utah native, a third party, a candidate, a conservative, he's making a push in Utah right now. Too early to call there. Let's update the all-important electoral college map. Where it stands right now, you can see Donald Trump maintains his lead. He has 139 electoral votes compared to Hillary Clinton's 104 electoral votes. 270 needed to be elected president of the United States. Uh, let's get another key race alert right now. All right, here's where the votes stand. Let's start in Florida. 95% of the vote is in. Donald Trump still maintains an impressive 105,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton. 5% of the vote. Outstanding 29 electoral votes. Trump ahead in Florida. In North Carolina, 81% of the vote is in. Trump maintains an impressive 114,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton. 15 electoral votes. Trump ahead in North Carolina. In Ohio, 67% of the vote is in. Donald Trump is a very impressive, almost 400,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton. Uh, 18 electoral votes at stake in Ohio. In Virginia, 83% of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton all of a sudden has taken a lead. 15,456 vote lead over Donald Trump. 83% of the vote is in. 13 electoral votes in Virginia. Hillary Clinton ahead there. Let's go to Georgia right now. Uh, in the state of Georgia, almost half of the vote is in. Donald Trump here, here too, he has a very impressive lead, 365,000 vote lead over Hillary Clinton, 16 important electoral votes at stake in Georgia right now. In Colorado, 53, more than half of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has a lead of about 73,000 votes over Donald Trump, nine electoral votes in the state of Colorado. In Michigan, a quarter of the vote is in. Trump is ahead there, still maintaining a lead of almost 50,000 votes over Hillary Clinton right now. 24% of the vote is in, 16 electoral votes at stake in Michigan and New Hampshire. 41% of the vote is in. Trump is ahead there as well. 5,297 vote lead over Hillary Clinton. Four electoral votes. Everyone is critically important in New Hampshire. Trump is ahead in New Hampshire right now. More votes coming in. Let's take a look at Wisconsin. 28% of the vote is in. Trump is ahead in Wisconsin right now by more than 50,000 votes, 10 electoral votes uh, at stake in Wisconsin. In Pennsylvania, third of the vote is in. Hillary Clinton has an impressive lead, uh, 250,000 vote lead over Donald Trump, 20 electoral votes in Pennsylvania. <laughs> votes just beginning to come in in Arizona, only 2% of the vote is in. Uh, uh, Donald Trump has a lead of 6,600 votes uh, over Hillary Clinton, 11 electoral votes in Arizona. Let's take a look and see nationwide where the popular vote stands right now. U.S. popular vote. Donald Trump has 48.9%. Hillary Clinton has 47%. He is ahead nationally by 1,153,000 votes uh, in uh, nationwide. That's the popular vote. Uh, he's ahead by more than 1,100,000 over Hillary Clinton. In the all-important electoral vote count, Donald Trump, once again, he's ahead there with 139 electoral votes to Hillary Clinton's 104 electoral votes, 270. i got to remind you, that's the magic number, the magic number needed to win the White House. Let's go back over to Jake. Uh, Jake.
I, I know you've checked the markets right now. How are they <laughs> reacting well, to all of this? So far, pretty good news for Donald Trump. It's great news for Donald Trump so far, and uh, it's it's an unpredictable race. We're talking about this, how much this really uh, upends so much of the prediction industry. Uh, but the one thing that the markets don't like is uncertainty. And right now we've been told uh, that U.S. stock futures are down nearly 500 points. That's 2.7 percent. Wall Street has consistently during this election season, uh, whenever Trump took the lead uh, or seemed to be doing well, investors have been worried about his unpredictability, his tough talk on, on global trade deals. Uh, and the market jitters most obviously in, in the currency markets uh, with the Mexican peso plunging 7% against the U.S. dollar. Obviously, uh, Mr. Trump has talked about negotiating uh, tough trade deals with Mexico, talking about uh, scrapping NAFTA, the free trade agreement. Uh, gold, which tends to um, rise when investors are nervous, is up 3% and is up more than $1,300 an ounce. So right now, with all this news that seems to be excellent for Donald Trump, uh, Wall Street and the markets are very, very jittery. A lot of jittery people out there right now, Dana. You know, I'm, I'm guessing that the people in Brooklyn, they're probably, they're, I can see their fingers that's probably. That's the Hillary Clinton headquarters. Uh, yeah, fingers probably bleeding because there's no more nail to bite. I, I'm guessing that that's probably what's happening. And it, it's, I, I think it's really, really important to point to the state of Virginia because these other battleground states where the candidates, both of them, traveled heavily, okay, you know, we expected those to be close. But the story of Virginia tonight, even though she has pulled ahead here, in the polling, and frankly, in, in some of the modeling, she was ahead by many, many points. Significantly, yeah. Significantly. And, and the fact that he is doing so well there uh, tells you about the fervor out there, whether it is for him, against her, or just against Washington, to me, that is a story that is really encapsulated in the Commonwealth. And, and let me just say again, we are still waiting for the results uh, from these four uh, firewall states. Um, but I don't know what we're going to. I mean, Hillary Clinton needs to hold on to these four. We still don't know uh, what's going to happen in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Virginia or New Hampshire. But Donald Trump is competitive in all four of them. And it is entirely possible that that there is a wave out there that the pollsters and the predictors and all the vote modelers did not see coming at all. The one thing that I will say about the modelers is I was just talking to somebody who said that with regard to the modeling that both parties do and both campaigns did, that they had it, there was sort of a, a 2% margin of error, for lack of a better way to say it. Having said that, you know, there is something that is out there that is is hard to get with data. And yeah. it's, just, it's just clear that that's true. Those early exit polls showed there were a lot of angry voters out there uh, in the United States. John, let's take a look at North Carolina right now, because that's really emerging as a critically important state. 82% of the vote in North Carolina is in. Donald Trump still maintains the lead, one of about 120,000 votes. And you, so you start to get to that point, 120,000 votes, you're thinking, is it possible? Is it at all possible to make that up? So you start looking at the blue population centers. You look out here, they're at 100%, so there's nothing more to be gained for Secretary Clinton there. This is the biggest one here. You come into Mecklenburg County. Uh, still some votes to be gained here. Uh, is it possible? Yeah, sure. There's math there. It's possible to be done, but that's assuming you know that she runs it up at the margin she is there. It also assumes that Donald Trump's not adding. Let's come over here. Uh, we're up to 99% in Wake County. Uh, Hillary Clinton's winning this county by just what they targeted. They wanted, we wanted to win this big 15 points or more. Uh, very successful here. Uh, and yet, uh, they're getting swamped with turnout elsewhere is what's making this so race. They did exactly what they wanted to do here at 70, 77 percent. The question is the numbers. We're going to match the numbers up to past campaigns and see if they're getting the percentages right. The question is, did they gin up the turnout? Can she come back here at 17 percent? You look around. Uh, let's go back in time. I just want to look at some of these rural counties up top here. There's some small counties up here. You're, you know, you're looking, again, let's go back. This is the race before. You're going back here. Let's go back in 16 and see if we have anything here. You know, 80%. So even if you keep going there, you're talking about a couple hundred votes at best when you look up here. So you look at this big population center. Again, this is where the votes are in these areas around here, or in the Raleigh-Durham Research Triangle and the areas around it, 80%. So there are some votes to be counted here, but if you look, come back and pull out to that statewide lead at 83%, that's a tough margin to make up. Doesn't make it impossible. If she's going to make it up, a lot of it's going to have to come from right here in Charlotte and in the suburbs. Uh, again, if you do that math, you're at 43%. If she doubles that, you know, there's 100,000 votes there. If you double it, so it's there. Uh, the question is, you start checking these Republican counties, 
you know, there's a couple hundred votes here for Donald Trump to make up, maybe a thousand. There's still some votes here for Donald Trump to make up here. And so we got a ways to go before you can get into the exact nature of it. But if you're in Trump campaign headquarters right now, uh, you think it might get closer uh, because your votes are in here and your votes are in here. And that's what happens in the war room. They start calling around to all these counties, who's left out, what's left out. And here they're looking at, they, they're asking here, how, are they close to Charlotte or are they more up here where the Republicans run a little better? Uh, that's what they do in the war rooms right now. And this is. Let, let's take a look at two states, Michigan and Wisconsin. Uh, these are states that Hillary Clinton obviously has to win. Michigan first. But, Donald Trump is ahead right now in both of those states. And as you look at the map, before I go into the numbers, these are the two states, if the map stays like we see it right now, if, if Donald Trump holds on to Florida, if Donald Trump holds on to North Carolina, then these are the states that will decide the next president of the United States. That's Michigan a big first. if. That's a big if, but let's just go through. 26% of the vote right now, and you're just looking here again. You're up here, Upper Peninsula. You're down through here. Uh, Donald Trump is he's winning. He's got a lead of about 60,000 votes. He's winning areas where the, where the Republican, the conservative, needs to win, and he's winning them. Just want to go back again. These are tiny places, so you think that's not a big deal. That does matter in a close race, 59%, 70%. So in these small rural counties, Donald Trump is running up numbers, and you think, oh, it's 200 votes, oh, it's 300 votes. Well, guess what? If it's 200, 300, 1,000, 800, you start racking that up. That's what you need to offset the Democratic leads down in these places. You have 63% you know, of the vote in Oakland County, so more, more votes for Democrat and much more population, as you see. Uh, but let's go back in time and take a look, 51 54. So she's underperforming. President Obama a little bit here in the Detroit suburbs. Just want to come back to Wayne County. She's stretched out a little bit. The last time that was two or four points. Uh, she's now in a 10-point lead range there. Only 15 this, is the key. This, this is the key. This is, this is the key, and this is why, you know, again, at Trump headquarters, they're looking at Michigan. They're thinking 16. That's a magical number to add to Trump's math if they can get those 16 electoral votes. But let's take some time. Let's wait. Wayne County is notoriously slow in reporting its votes. Uh, we've been up, we'll, we'll be here for a while, let's just put it that way. Uh, we're 27 percent statewide, uh, but she needs a big number out of Wayne County to make that up. Mathematically possible? Absolutely. Uh, but again, in the Clinton war room, trust me, they are frantically calling not only into Wayne County, but they're calling in down here too, as you get at 66, you know, only a 5 percent. Again, smaller county, less population, but if the margin stays like that, and it's early, so you're not sure the margin's going to hold like that, but if it stays like that, the math is still possible in a very tense Clinton war room right now. They're looking at Michigan, and they're saying the math is possible. So let's go next door. We're at 33 percent. Wisconsin. This one's getting interesting in the sense that this is a Republican area usually up here. Well, let's come over to Eau Claire. We He's 51,000 votes ahead in but, Wisconsin right now, but, a state that usually goes Democratic. And so here's a big area where President Obama ran it up 56-43, and we have absolutely nothing. So you start to look again, in the, are there votes out here for Hillary Clinton to make this up? Janesville, which is home to the House Speaker, at least at the moment, Paul Ryan, uh, 51 to 42 or 52 to 43, if you want to round those up. Again, you go back in time, that's a problem. That, that's a problem. When you're in a state like this and you're underperforming, uh, where the last Democrat who won it, that, that's an issue. So if you're underperforming here, the question is, are you overperforming anywhere else? Because Trump, Trump tends to be running well where he needs to do and, and very well in other places. Let's just look at a place like Oshkosh, 3% of the state population, Winnebago County, 51-42. He flipped this county at the moment. That, that, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a big population center that has flipped. Uh, and so let's go, you go back here and you look here, 66% uh, of the vote as well. So uh, that, this, 3% of the state population, you say no big deal. Guess what? In a battleground state, you flip a county like that, you're doing some math. And you start to do math like that, that's what puts you ahead. And so we're going to watch the vote centers. If you're the Democrats now, you're looking at Dane County, which is 9% of the state population. You've got a third of the vote counted. You better hope. Yeah, almost you, you, 9 yeah. Of the almost 9% of the population of the state. Then. Yeah, so you, you have to hope uh, that you've got more of that coming and that that margin stays like that and you get more heavy vote as you come through. And you, again, you start looking through. This is another, this is it here. This is it. Seven, but you're, you're she's, again, running up the percentages. We're only at 45%. Still a lot of votes left to be counted here. You presume most of them are going to go to Hillary Clinton. It just, whoop, just clicked up to 82%. So let's see what that did. We just jumped from 82% in Milwaukee County. So now we pull back out. It got her closer. It got her closer. She's now 48 to 47. So those votes come in. You see what happens. A big vote, big, 
big votes come in in the Democratic area. It brings the votes up here. Let's just check back at Dane County, still at 32%. So as you watch these counties start making big jumps, it is possible. It is possible to come back. But I can tell you right now in the Clinton war room and in the Trump war room, this is where the urgent phone calls are going into Michigan, into Wisconsin, because at the moment, again, let's just check one more second right here. North Carolina is holding. Florida is holding. Looks like Virginia is trending Clinton's way, Wolf. We're going to look across the Rust Belt here. Michigan, Wisconsin, some vote counting to do. John, stand by. We have two more projections right now. CNN now projects that Hillary Clinton will win the state of New Mexico with its five electoral votes. Hillary Clinton wins New Mexico. CNN also now projects that Donald Trump will win Missouri with its ten electoral votes. Another important win for Donald Trump in Missouri. Let's take a look at the Electoral College map right now, where it stands, the all-important map, I should say. Uh, Donald Trump is still ahead. He has 149 electoral votes to Hillary Clinton's 109 electoral votes. 270 needed to win the White House. You see the blue states, Hillary Clinton states, the red states, Donald Trump states, all those yellow states, too early to call. We have not been able to make a projection in those yellow states. Let's go back to John uh, over at the Magic Wall. Uh, John, you're, you're looking at the, what the national vote right now, and Donald Trump is ahead, what, by two points. Looking at the national vote, we still got some ways to go, and we're still early in the count in a lot of these states out here. So I just want to go back to this again for people at home who are thinking, is this possible? Is this possible? This is where we have it right now. Actually, we've moved a couple of other states since you did that. But this is this is the as we count map. I want to just go back to where we had this coming. Let's do in New today. Mexico and Missouri first. Sure. You bet. Let's switch. We'll get there. Yeah. Just highlight those. Okay. Yeah. So let's look, come out to New Mexico. Let's take a peek. Uh, Hillary Clinton running up 50 to 50 to 40 essentially at the moment. Uh, these are your major population centers. You're going to come here first. Santa Fe County. Back here, Albuquerque. Not a surprise that, uh, that she took New Mexico. No, it's become, it used to be a swing state. George W. Bush yeah. won it in one of his elections, yeah. but it's become very much a blue state. But so let's go back and look here. This is this is where we this is where we started the night right now here and so what are we looking at right Clinton was at 268 we thought she just wins one state like Nevada we'll get there but Democrats think they're going to win Nevada most Republicans think they'll win Nevada we'll see what happens but the early prognosis on the night was she wins that holds everything out here then she could afford to lose Florida she could afford to lose North Carolina but we're in a very different conversation right now even if we give her Nevada Trump is favored here it's 11 it's 29. That's 15. Now we're in the ballpark. Now we're thinking, let's even leave New Hampshire out of it for a minute. New Hampshire's still in play. We're counting the votes there. But at 259, even if she wins Virginia, Michigan puts Donald Trump over the top. Let's say she comes back and holds on. The Wayne County vote comes in. Wisconsin would put him at 269. Then you've got a congressional district in Maine or the state of New Hampshire can put Donald Trump over the top. So we are having a conversation now that it was impossible to have two weeks ago. It was just improbable. You were not having a reality-based conversation trying to do this map a couple of weeks ago. The polling told you that was a fool's errand. It is not a fool's errand tonight as we watch these results. Does that mean this is going to happen? No, we don't know that. We're going to be counting votes for a long time. But it is now conceivable. And one other thing to watch, uh, you know, Democrats think that one's gone. We haven't counted many votes out here yet. There was a late push by Democrats. Is there anything we can do to turn that one around? Let's take a look at Iowa. Um, we're getting, yeah. beginning to get some votes in from Iowa right now. Some Democrats were thinking at the end, do we need to suddenly go back and try to turn something around? Uh, are we going to be in a problem? And it's blue at the moment, uh, but we're only at 13% of the vote. And the votes that are in, Iowa City and Des Moines, those are big Democratic areas. So she's up 59, 60 to 35, up to 13% right now. But... I said, when I was showing you Michigan, I was saying take a deep breath because all the votes were coming in from conservative areas. Well, in Iowa, uh, there's no reason for Republicans who think they're going to win the state to panic or Democrats to celebrate because we are very early on in the early votes we're getting. Polk County, which is home to Des Moines, the big Democratic area, Iowa City, College Town out here. She's running it up in the College Town, but only at 2%. So uh, this, again, in electoral college chess, you focus on the big ones. Florida's 29, North Carolina's 15, Michigan's 16, Pennsylvania's 20. Every now and then, the little guys come into play. And we may be counting the votes in Iowa, and we may be watching the votes in New Hampshire uh, deep into the night because we have a different race tonight than we thought we had even just days ago. All right, let's go to the big uh, the key battleground states. Let's, let's start at Florida right now. Let's come on down here. We're up to 95%, and it's close. But you get to the point, what are we at, 140, a little shy of that, 130-something? Donald Trump is ahead by about 140,000 yeah. votes. So you come down there and you think, are they there? Well, Palm Beach County is up to 97%. So there are more votes here. 
brought that many more votes here. But it could, be, done. could be some. You're almost done. If it's, you know, whatever it is, it's, you're adding up tens of 20. 98 percent now in Broward County, which essentially tells you with the Clinton campaign war room, there's not much here. You might get some. And again, the size of this gap, if that 2 percent comes in, it's a decent chunk of votes in a major population center, but it's not enough. So you need a little, a little, somewhere you need a lot. And we're up to 99 percent here. So there are no more big, giant, empty baskets. So almost all of those three yeah. counties, heavily Democratic, they are almost all in. They are almost all in. And so now you're going through, again, now you're calling, I hate to say this, but now is when you're calling in, is there anything outstanding? This is at 100 percent. You've come in there. Uh, let's come up here other places, tiny, much more small counties, but they're at 100 percent. So the, yeah. the issue now at the Clinton campaign headquarters when it comes to Florida, number one, what's left in any of these small counties? And if the math Let's continues this way, is there anything, you know, you're not, you're not in any, you're nowhere near automatic recount land. Let's go, so to, the question is, let's do go back to Michigan it? and Wisconsin, see what's happening right now. First of all, in Michigan. 49 to 48, 50, if you want to round that up to 45, I mean, 50 to 45, if you round that up. Again, so you're looking, just to go back in time. There's not much of a surprise up here. Marquette, we'll see where the vote comes in. Let's go back and check. Let's see where we are right now. 50 to 43, 56. See, they, you're seeing, just as I was showing you in Wisconsin, you find every now and then you find that one big county, moderate-sized county. It's not huge, but in a close race, uh, you flip a county like that uh, from past races, you're talking about a chunk of votes that matter. Now let's come down here. This race is going to be decided down here. Oakland County, she's leading. But, again, if the final third comes in, at that, you're going to make up some votes, but not a lot, and this is what we're waiting for. We're only at 16% in Wayne County, and this has to be not only a mar not only the margin. If it's this close, 51 to 43, let's just go back in time and look at that. There's no way. There's just, if that stays that close, yeah. we have, you know, we're, we're waiting for inner city Detroit. If inner city Detroit comes in and blows that away, but if you look at this 73 to 26, if Donald Trump, at the end of the night, is getting over 40% of the vote in Wayne County, well then... That's a tough night yeah, for Democrats really in the state of Michigan. So we got to wait. We're only at 16 percent. Those votes could be coming from out here, down here, more Republican areas. But this is a this is a question of one. She better turn that percentage around big time if she wants to win Michigan. And number two, where are the votes? That's not a lot of vote. That's not a lot of votes right now. We're only at 16 percent. Uh, but that, that's a warning sign. I just want to just show you that again because it's a stunner if you look at it. 51 percent for Hillary Clinton in Wayne County tells you everything you yeah. need to know about Michigan at the moment. Emphasis on well, at Donald the moment. Trump always said he would get those so-called Reagan Democrats, right. that working class blue collar voter. Right. And so that's this is a this is fascinating. And I'd love you. Yeah. We'll, we'll pour through the Michigan exit polls as we do once that gets higher. Again, you're looking at that right now. If you're at the Clinton campaign headquarters, you are calling your people out here and you're asking what went on. And, and to be clear, uh, I, I, know, I know Dana was sharing some of this reporting the other day as well. Democrats out here have been calling the Clinton campaign for months, not just weeks, but for months, saying you need to tend to the garden. You think you have this one for granted. You have, you know, you're just taking this for granted, thinking you're going to win it. Uh, you better get out here. Uh, and the Clinton campaign late did get out there, uh, but there's, you know, there's a one of the. If, if this keeps going this way, one of the criticisms after will be that they took the blue, the so-called blue wall which is these states they've won since 1992, 240, last six presidential elections, 242 electoral votes. They include Wisconsin, they include Michigan, uh, they include Pennsylvania, which looks good for Clinton at the moment. Uh, if these stay like this, she's going to have a Trump's gonna anti -trade, trade message, like Bernie Sanders uh, anti trade message seems uh, to have resonated in Michigan. Let's go to Wisconsin. Make a key right? point. Before I do that, I just want to do one thing because you just make a key point. I know the experts on the other side of the room, and they're right. Primary wounds very rarely carry over to the general election. So you can lose a state in the primary or, you know, Hillary Clinton won a lot of southern states in the primaries that she's not winning tonight. But Democratic primary, these are Bernie Sanders states, uh, both of them. And so as we go through this tonight, to your point, I mean, I did that because of your point about the trade message. Yeah, all right. About, and you want to go Wisconsin? Step, step up. Let's do Wisconsin in a moment. Got to take a quick break. This presidential race turning out to be a real nail 